Good morning. It's so delightful to be with you today. I'm just going to let everyone kind of get signed on. Um, I'm thinking there was one thing I needed to add. <laughs> one thing. I'll probably figure out like 20 things that I need to add. But we are going to be doing the pin cushion today. At least that's the plan. And I um, did it in the prep video, which I finished late last night. But for the pin cushion, I want you to um, go ahead and get your piece of because um, I didn't I did it in the prep video, but I didn't put it on the the sheet. Put shape flex on the back of this. So if you are just joining us and you don't have that done, because it doesn't tell you to do that in the instructions. Go ahead and put a little piece of uh, Shape Flex on the back of your Velveteen. Velveteen's a bear, and if you don't stabilize it, then you run the risk of having it shred, and that's just unacceptable and annoying. So see if you can go ahead and stabilize that, and I'm gonna get my Lexi phone. Everyone ready to stitch? Brenda, work day. It's Sunday. Is it Sunday? Oh, it's Monday. <laughs> it's my Sunday. You know, Saturday, uh, Sunday is my Saturday and Monday is Brent, uh, Monday is my Sunday. I totally, I was just thinking it's still the weekend because it's the weekend for us. Good morning, Anna. Good morning, everyone. From Chattanooga, Tennessee. I could use some of that sunny weather. I think it's warmer there. It's got to be warmer there than it is here. All right. Are we ready? We've got one more minute and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning, Miss Shelly. I'm going to put my flex foam right over here. I had a note on here that I needed to add my flex foam. So, and I really wanted to... Um, put some lotion on my hands so you guys didn't have to look at them, but I can't find my lotion. I went ahead and organized all my stuff just like this last night. So here are all my threads or the threads that they recommend we use. And then I went through and organized all of my pieces. So we are gonna start out this morning with scissors. So let me grab that. Here's scissors, thread colors. I put thread colors in the chart but they might change as we go. Um, like for instance, this one here, I didn't even know. My my book isn't, my book is like the instruct, they send us, um, we buy like an instructor pack. So I had to like print mine out. So it could just be that mine didn't have the colors that looked really great. So I thought this was gonna be chartreuse and I didn't know it was gonna be this dark color. So I might've put a color that didn't go as well. So we can change that as we go. I'm gonna grab a pen. Patrick came into my sewing room and this morning he's like, you need to clean your room. Which, oh my goodness, I do. I need, let me grab my pen so that I'm having trouble finding stuff. As usual. Ooh. This was, um, this was back from like Patrick's business. I was like, where'd we get this nice little pen? He used to, um run a recruiting business and he was integral executives all right just watching today Mar um brenda marilyn you stitching with us happy 4 a.m tasmania oh my god Blake, that's so exciting i don't know if i've ever talked to anyone from tasmania i got more than two hours of sleep um, Patrick shouldn't go into your sewing room. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. When I did the chart, like I initially, I initially looked at this and I went, oh, scissors. And look, they're four and a half by four and a half. That's going to be the final size. Let's go ahead and 
put them all in a nine and a half by nine and a half hoop and then we will group and then as soon as I did it and I put the scissors on top I was like oh I can't group this because anytime you have designs overlapping then you can no longer group so I was trying to figure out a ways around it and then I just went it's just gonna be easier for us to just stitch them all out in a five by seven hoop I did some stuff like when I group these filler blocks together I grouped them based on the color that we were doing the quilting because I thought we could go in I don't know if you've ever used any of your features in the color category you know where you can change your colors but I was like maybe we'll change them to a bubble gum the same color and these two the same color and that way we could color group and it would stop after it did these two we'll see how it goes because I don't even know if I really chose the right colors um, but we'll see. We'll see if that's going to work for us. Well, you know what, Marilyn? I'm glad that you're joining us and that you're just working on your uh, UFOs. Because I thought it'd just be fun if you're not stitching with us. Just show up. You can just put us on, on in the background. And then you can um, just work on something. And it's just like a time that you could set aside for yourself. Now, if you've never done a sew along with me before, I have never stitched this out. So... I call this just stitching with my girls and my guys. And uh, if you see me doing something I'm not supposed to be doing, make sure you let me know. Sometimes I sometimes I talk and I don't pay as close attention. And sometimes I go on autopilot because I think I'm like, I think I, I have it. I'm like, I've got this. And then I don't have it. So just make sure... Uh, just know I'm not perfect and I've never done this and I've just played it out in my head as I went and did the um, as I did this supply list but we're gonna start off with scissors what I would like to do is I would like to um, do one scissor and then you're gonna do two three and four on your own because once you do one you can do two and they're really easy and then I'm um, so happy we'll do so happy the pin cushion Flying geese, I put a note here that we're going to stitch the quilting last. So we're going to do all the piecing. We're, we're not going to do the flying geese and then bring it back and do the quilting. We're going to do it all at once. And then hopefully, these are just filler blocks. It's just laying them down um, and then doing the stitching on top. So I'm hoping we can get through all the filler blocks. Whatever we don't get done today, look. Whatever is not completed during the sew along is homework. And then I want you to go ahead and completely sew together section ones, one and two. So the goal be before we get together next week is for you to sew together, stitch, sew this together, stitch, sew this together, and then sew this to this. That's the goal. And then next week we'll do... Uh, we'll do um, section three and four. This one, I'm kind of excited about this one. We'll wish Glide was one of the thread color options on my machine. You know, I never even, I don't never trust that, like, because I feel like you get different colors, but it doesn't, sometimes the color in the machine isn't the same color as the color in the book, but um, that would be nice if it was one of the options, maybe in the next upgrade. So we are going to go ahead and grab, for scissor number one, your fabric that you're going to grab is, but this is going to be like straight up embroidery, a little bit of applique. It's not going to be like some, cre I call this like a, this is going to be a medium bite because there is, um, it's a bigger project. It's one of the quilts, but it's going to be easier stitching than like something like cup of chair. I was ready for something a little more simple. So I'm going to put this to the side. This is what you want. We're going to be working in the 5x7, so I'm going to go ahead and hoop up my 5x7. Oh, I mean, here's some of it if you haven't seen. This is another project. Is this so cute? I just love this one. This is like, it might be one of my favorite of the other projects. Little pincushion. Dana stitched that out for us. She's one of the gals that works at the shop. And this is one of the projects too. Isn't that, is it so cute? I love it. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the side. just want to show you some of the other things available. We're going to be using, I think today, I had us using the 5 by mostly the 5 by 7 and then we're going to go into the 6 by 6 if you have it. If not, you can use the 6 by 10 What's great about, like, if you had to choose, 
Here's my six by 10 and my six by six. I would definitely get the six by 10 first, but I like having the six by six too. Everything you wanna do in this hoop, you can also do in this hoop. But you can't do everything in this hoop that you can do in this hoop. So this one first, and then this is for the girl that has everything. Then you get the six by six, okay? Unless this is some like a hoop size that you use all the time, um, then get this one first. But if you had to choose, I'd go the bigger. Bigger one, um, I'm gonna put these to the side. I'm gonna put this to the side. When I'm doing anything in my six inch hoop, as long as I'm running it vertically, I just cut with the fabric 10 and a half inches muslin. Muslin is what I'm gonna be using as my stabilizer today. Everyone always asks, why do you use muslin? Did you do that? So Shelly, are you talking about this? I, so Charlene Booth came in and she bound one of my books for me. And I was like, oh my God, I love it. And I don't want to go to Kinko's or do they even have Kinko's anymore? That makes me feel pretty old. Um, Office Depot, I know they'll do it for you there. But I bought a wire binder on, on Goodwill. I don't know if you know, know, know this. Here, I'm going to, while we're talking, I'm going to go ahead and hoop this up. Oh my God, Shelly, I think about you every time it snows. I've been worried about you up in Tahoe. I'm like so worried that, I've just been worried. Oh my goodness, I've been worried about everyone up there. Um. All right, let's go ahead and put this in here. So I bought that, I didn't know, It's. It, first of all, it's a hard decision. There's so many different, um, wire binders the one that Charlene did for me is uh it had the um let me see do I have it right here and I can show it to you kind of the plastic stuff which might be easier so she did oh no this one I did and I did it poorly because I had to learn I've had to learn like what size to get what size works because the wires come in all different sizes she bought me or she did the one for me that see I did this one too do you love that? I just love it. And if I could complete a thought, I would let you know that I bought mine on Goodwill.com. And I want to say they still sell them. It's older. And it was like, I want to say I paid $35 for it and then like $40 to ship it. But it was worth every single penny. Okay, let's look at the instructions. Make sure I'm not leading you astray. But I was thinking I could just bring it to the store and if people wanted to use it, it's just finding a place for it. Because I'm not opposed to that. I, you know me. I want to share it with you. Um, a color for the fabric. So I had put on your spreadsheet, I think I put bubblegum. These are the two pinks that came in your kit. Taffy's not going to be the right shade. So yes, let's go ahead and use bubblegum. We'll make sure it looks good here. The other thing is, if you look at it, oh, you know what? That must be bubblegum and red. Those are going to be the colors. Because I was thinking these two do not look great together. All right, that's all we need. Let's go to the machine. I was loading everything last night and seeing what was going to fit. Did I answer everyone's questions? Oh, <laughs> I just read what you wrote, Shelly, that um, snow is a four-letter word. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, USB is not loaded. Let me see where I'm loaded to. I'm on the top port. Oh, so this is what I use, and I plug it into my tap port, and I just put, you know, put them in and out, and I just hadn't pushed that button, so it wasn't showing anything. We are going to go oh so delightful quilting first. The design that we're going to put in. Let me, let, local ladies, let me get my stuff together. And if I can get it together, I'll just bring my thing, my uh, binder in, and then you can just use it. You'll just, you'll just have to cut all your stuff. Oh, that's the other thing. That's one of the reasons I haven't done it. I don't have a paper cutter. So I've been looking, I've been watching for a really good paper cutter too. And then once I have both, then you guys can just come in and just do your books. Okay, uh, this is hearts. 
So we're doing scissor one. It's going to be hearts five, the four by four. You should have your batting already cut four by four. We're going to use bubble gum for our quilting. It's centered and we're going to be using the five by seven hoop. That's our four, final cut size. So it took me a long time to put that, um, put the spreadsheet together because I really struggled with how I was going to group it. And, um, I also struggled with what colors we're going to go in there. So I'll change them as we go if we need to. So we're doing the four by four. Go ahead and set it. We're using the five by seven hoop. So I want you to go ahead and select your hoop size. Why do you use muslin? I use muslin. So I'm going to select my hoop size. We're going to come up here. That's going to be your settings. Some For some of you, it's down here on the bottom. Let's set our hoop size to five by seven because that's the hoop we're using. So we can make sure we use our space effectively um and we're going to go embroidery this uh this this is just the background quilting let's go ahead and add don't move your design yet and we're going to add the scissors and oh so delightful pes it's called so happy and this is the first set of scissors right there don't move it because if you move it now they're gonna move, move individually, the quilting design and the scissors, unless you have this grouping feature. The easier thing to do is just hit embroidery, and when you go to the page from which you stitch out, it will group that, so now that is one. And I'm not gonna move it with my finger, I'm just gonna go layout, move, and I'm gonna scoot it up to the top. If I slide my hoop on, which I haven't done yet, and I'm gonna do, it will not allow you to go outside of that embroidery field. The reason I use muslin is um, because Nikki Brazel told me to. Now, that's that's one of the reasons. So, Nikki Brazel, who was an educator for a long time and just one of, just like such an amazing person. Um, uh, she, she, she had the shop hop, the Anita Good shop hop quilt. And um, she told me that she used muslin instead of batting. And I never even asked her. I don't know why she did it. I do it because it feels better. It's softer. No-show mesh to me is like plasticky. And although I do use it for some of my projects, if it's a quilt and my quilt has batting, background fabric that's stabilized, then I just use the muslin. Muslin will not give you much support. So you don't want to just ever really embroider on just like the muslin. You always want to stabilize it, um, but since I'm going through all these layers, it's enough. Were there any other questions? Annetta, what are you waiting for? I thought we sent everything to you. Let me know. How do you get the pages? The this this uh, you'll order the book. the um, The book is gonna just be just like the regular book. It'll have the CD in there, and. Let's go ahead and get started. So now that my hoop is on, now I can scoot this up. Maybe I can get you an angle like this. And when I scoot it up, it won't let you go outside the embroidery field. We're gonna scoot it up. The reason for that is we're gonna uh, embroider here at the top. It saves all of this muslin. And I'm using 90 inch muslin. And when I'm using my, uh, my uh, five by seven inch hoop, I cut my muslin nine inches by width of fabric. And I put those measurements in your spreadsheet. Okay, uh, first color is going to be placement stitch for your um, batting. We are going to do that, and let's look and see what they're telling us as far as well, the embroidery design. Yeah, there's nothing much going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this color in. This is bubblegum. How do you get the pages? Oh my, I love those books. Yes, the books are great. The the uh, one I bought, it's an Achilles, um, A-K-I-L-E-S. Achilles, was it 3.0 or something like that? So first thing that's gonna stitch out from this page, mine says layout, I'm gonna hit that again, that shows me the picture. Remember, turquoise is going to be placement. Um, orange is going to be tack down. So that's not, these colors that it's just telling you the steps that we're doing. Placement, tack down, placement, tack down. Let's go ahead and do this first. Sorry. 
And while it's doing the placement, I'm going to spray my batting and my background fabric. So here's my spray tent. I showed this off the other day and I don't think people realize like how little this spray tent is. I just put a piece of cardboard in there, but you just fold it, one hand on top, one hand the opposite direction and just twist it up. And then it's just little and it comes with a little carrying case when you're ready to use it. Whoop, and just open it up. I like to put a piece of cardboard in here and this one's gross, but I need to change it out. And that way I spray right here. So I'm gonna spray my batting first. You have a smooth side, a bumpy side. Bumpy side is the wrong side. That's what you wanna spray. And I'm gonna spray the back of my background fabric as well. I use KK100, it's my favorite spray. It's made by Ganold, we carry it in the store. And don't get crazy, just a little bit. I know you wanna really press down on that nozzle and really get a good spray but this stuff is nice and gummy it's like it's just perfect it's perfect so there's my um placement stitch normally if you were cutting it as per the instructions they want you to cut your batting bigger then you would do the tack down and trim we are cutting it two size and that way we can skip a bunch of the steps at the same time i'm going to lay this down you just want to center it to the batting. I mean, I used to sometimes like fold it in fourths, put my finger in the center and put the center here and unfold it. But now I just like, I just lay it down. Oh, this is directional. So let's look and see which direction we're going to put it in. It wants these arrows to go up and down and not sideways. So make sure you put them up and down and just center it. Make sure it's not completely cockeyed. You don't want it to be... You don't want it to be like super twisted or anything like that. All right, we're gonna skip some steps. So now what we're gonna skip is, this is the tack down for the batting. We're gonna skip that. To skip that, there's a button right here. Find it on your screen that has the minus and the plus. I'm on a Brother Luminaire. So if you're on a different brand, find the equivalent button. If you're on a Baby Lock or Brother, you'll have that button. It might be somewhere else. This is a tack down, we're not doing that. That's a placement stitch for the background fabric. We're not doing that, but we are going to do the tack down for the background fabric, and then we will do the quilting. That is the door slamming because my door leads to the outside of the house, so sorry, but we're a main thoroughfare right here. Michigan. Oh, that's good too, Debbie. Yeah, you could just do that. Whatever works, right? Whatever works. I can't remember. Um, Lady Fair, is that Donna? Somebody wanted, oh, I'm doing the quilting now. So I'm just, this is the cross stitch quilting. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Colors that you're gonna need. We're gonna be using, um, I don't know if it's taffy. Like a light pink and a red. And I almost think I don't want to use this color. So let's grab our threads and look. So we could just go taffy and red. How would that look? Or to me, like a lighter pink, but they didn't have that in the um in the kit.
Should I go secret light pink? Their pink is almost the same color. What pink are you are you ladies using? I didn't put the thread numbers on the spreadsheet. I put the name of the color. So, um, like this one here is bubblegum. And that came in the thread kit. And I'm thinking I want to go... If I could do it over again, I would have used this for the quilting. And then I would use bubble gum for the shears. Here's the shears. And the bubble gum and the red. So I think what I'm going to do though is I'm going to use these two together for the shears. So next step shows you that it wants you to do the lighter colored shear. Do you think I should do that? Or that'll be fine. I'm going to use this one because this one's really close. This one's a little bit darker and I want the contrast. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back up on the top. And this is what I'm using. And that's my final decision. What speed is your machine stitching at? Um, I always stitch at 1,050. I stitch as fast as it will go. And if you have like a Destiny or a Dream machine, whoop, if you have a Destiny or a Dream machine, if your thread ever breaks and you have to redo it, this is the button I always touch. This is going to go back to the very beginning of this color. This will go forward to the next color. So I'm going to just touch that, and now it's back to the beginning of that, just so you know. Um, so most of the high-end machines for Baby Lock and Brothers stitch at 1,050 stitches per minute. That's what it says. But even though the Destiny and the Dream Machine have the same speed as the Solaris, the Solaris is going to be, or the Solaris and the Luminaire are going to be faster. So they do certain things faster. Like if you watch my machine do a satin stitch next to the Dream Machine and Destiny, it's going to go faster. So when they came out with this machine, there were just things that it did. Um, still 1,050 stitches per minute, but they redesigned this embroidery arm over here. On the Destiny Dream Machine, the, this mechanism, there's like a, there's something, there's like a, like this. Like, see how you have this here on the side? That's where they replaced it, but on the Destiny Dream Machine, it's here up on top. So, whatever they do, even though we're both at 1,050 stitches per minute, this one's going to go faster. The only time I slow it down is if I'm doing something, like, challenging like a zipper or something like that, then I might slow it down. White would be beautiful, Shelly. I think white would be beautiful because look at mine's getting a little washed out in those stitches because it's the same color. So, um, I just like that color with the red. I think it's going to be enough contrast for the red. And this, this is what I'm going to put on next. It looks cute with like green or something, like any color. This is how I, I chose it. I just chose it according to, because they recommend a color for the quilting. Right here, they recommend a color. And this, it looked like the same color. I couldn't tell. Maybe that's taffy. I really couldn't tell. This might be the lighter pink and that might have been taffy. But they do look a little different. In the very beginning of the book, they also give you your colors. I hope that at some point they add like the specific glide color. Would be nice if that's what they're kidding it out. But there's the light pink, which is going to be the bubble gum, and the dark pink, which is going to be the taffy. That looks fine. Looks good. put in the red now. You can put in any color that you want.
And um, the red that they were calling, ooh, ooh. what is this? Maybe later. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, Patrick. Poor Patrick's been sick all weekend. I was like, Patrick, I know you don't feel well, but my life's my life's speed is starting. I need you to watch the dogs. So he's watching the dogs. This is I think this is was this Apple? Something like that? guys are doing your binding with the endpoint sticker? Did, is there some amazing tutorial out there that I need to watch? I just slap on my binding. I don't even, I don't even care. I just like, by the point, by the time I get to binding, I'm, I'm usually at the point where I'm like, I just want to get this done. On to the next project. It looks good, right? This is fine. I just can't make you look at my hands like this. Well, it's stitching this out. I'm going to go grab some lotion. tutorial all right that is the scissors we are not going to do the other ones you can do them they're super easy um just like we did let's go on and we are going to do the next stitch out which is so happy and that looks good i think that that color looks nice and i think that's probably what they meant for it to look like we are staying in our whoops Sorry about that. It has a mind of its own. I think we're staying in the 5x7 hoop. Let me grab my sheet. Did I have a weird ending sound? Was it just me? Okay. Um, this one too. It's a 4x6, so happy. I'm just going to go ahead and this is why we scoot our design up. When we go to rehoop, Making Korean potato pancakes. Ooh, Flight, that sounds good. That sounds awesome. I would like that. Sometimes my kids go, you know, before I, I started working, um, I was a stay-at-home mom for like eight years. And every once in a while, my kids will say stuff like, remember when mom used to cook all that great food? They'll reminisce about it because that's like what I did. And I'll say, shut up and eat your takeout. <laughs> Last night, we have a category of food in our house. And it's called, it's called freezer food. Are we going to do freezer food tonight? That's what, so I did. I made asparagus. <laughs> Everything else was from the freezer. All right. So when you put this in. Gently pull in this way so that it's nice and smooth. I was hand tighten, and if I can tighten it a little more with this, I will. But it's like literally this much of a turn. 
Do not be cranking it down. It should just be tight enough where it's, it's you can't undo it by hand. All right, we are getting so happy. I told Patrick, I'm going to, oh, let me see what else is, is that I'm going to cook and do all that stuff someday when, when I'm not working. Um, I kind of miss it. So these are colors in your thread kit. It looks like you can choose between, I think uh, bubble gum is going to look the best for the S. So I'm going to use bubble gum. I'm going to use Tide Water. This is that color right here. This one is aloe and then we're going to just use black for the happy or if you want you can always use um charcoal gray and the one that i like is shadow so i'm going to go slide this on the machine i want i want korean potato pancake i was thinking i was going to make chicken patrick had food poisoning and i know where he got it and so I was going to make chicken tonight, but I'm thinking that's what he had that gave it to him. I don't know if he's going to want chicken. I totally get it. And I'm going to say, okay, let's go home. That's going to clear the screen. Embroidery pocket. Let's get our spreadsheet because I want the quilting design. And the spreadsheet's nice because then you don't have to get the book out and look through the page. Um, I checked them twice, so I think they're right, but if you notice they're not, let me know so I can change it for everybody. So happy, zigzag two. Zigzag two. Um, did you know you can pinch and pull this on your, uh, on your Luminaire and Solaris? So we're doing P-E-S. And this is going to be the four by six vertical. Four by six horizontal comes in first, and then four by six the vertical will be the next one. Go ahead and set it. I still have the outline of my five by seven. I don't have to switch that. We're gonna add, and the design we're gonna add is gonna be so happy. Whoops, that was quilting. I want and it is this one right here. Go ahead and set it. Don't move it here. We're gonna go embroidery. If you want, you can move it. You can scoot it up the tiniest bit. Might as well, right? Saves us like half an inch. Say okay, and we are ready to go. This is a straight up embroidery. Um, first thing we're gonna do, because I am gonna use, for the quilting, where's my background fabric? It's that new white, like doodle fabric. I'm gonna use white. I went and bought myself a big king cone of Glide White. has a mind of its own today. I need a mannequin! Rolo! Oh my God, where have you been? I've been worried about you. Okay, I'm happy that I'm seeing you. I do, but no, look, I don't need a manicure. I just need lotion. Look how great they look now. Oh, that's all I needed. I don't have to, when, when I don't work someday, I'm gonna pamper myself, number one. I'm going to get a massage. I love massages, but um, it's been years, and it's not that I haven't had the opportunity. Like, I had a, somebody gave me a massage, like a gift card, and I just, I gave it away just because I am all about not making time for myself right now. Making time for myself increases my stress. <laughs> Doing my work decreases my stress, so that's what I prefer to do. Okay, gonna go ahead. This is going to be the placement line for your batting. Get your spray tan, get your spray, spray your batting and your background fabric. This is all you have for this one. This is your background fabric. There is your batting. Make sure it doesn't have any dark pieces on it. Is the fabrics are great. I, she did a great job with the mixers. I absolutely love them. Hope you do too, because you're going to see a lot of them. Background, nubby side. Here we go. All right. I know that's white and it's hard to see, but you're going to lay your background or your batting right inside that line. This allows you to skip all those steps. If you don't like to do it like this, don't. Just go through all the steps. 
But I just love doing it like this. If I, I guess if I was doing this and it was going to be um, like heavily washed or something like that, maybe I would, I would, well, even then <laughs> I wouldn't. Lazy. All right. We're going to skip the next step. Remember, what we just did was the placement. It was turquoise placement for uh, the batting. This is tack down. We don't need that. Placement for your background fabric. We don't need that. We need tack down for our background. And then we're going to do our quilting. And then we'll get into the meat of it. We have a Korean market here. We have a couple Korean markets here, and they do do, um, they make like, it's called banchan, which are the side dishes. And uh, I just, just one day we went in, they had all these signs up that said that, well, at first I saw it on the news and I sent it to Patrick. I don't know if they had their, uh, they didn't have their proper food inspection. Or, or maybe they won't quit, weren't going through the right process, so they stopped doing um, the side dishes, which makes me really sad. Because I mean, even without the inspection, I've been buying their side dishes for years now. So, and we don't have a huge selection here in Reno. Oop. Let me go ahead and cut that. I need a new bobbin. Because God forbid I cook anymore. Eat your takeout. Plus, I mean, my favorite Korean restaurant here closed during the pandemic. It was, it was good. It was Tofu House. I like authentic. I like, like, kind of classic food. I'm not really, I'm grabbing the wrong end. I don't like the fusion food as much. Like the more, okay, got it. I like just traditional is what I really, really like. So we have a place here and it's more fusion. I'm going to go back 10 stitches, minus 10, and there we go. Once we're done with this, I'm going to do, I think it's bubble gum first. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. Is that, how do you say it? Spatzel? I just love to eat. I love anything carby. Noodles, potatoes, anything bready. Oh my God, it's so good. Hi, Miss Gracie. Hi, Janet. Rainy Florida, I wonder if you, if uh, our rain here made it to you. Janet, someday all I'm going to do is stuff for me. I used to be yes girl. My girlfriends would be like, do you want to do this? And I go, yes, let's do it. I was, I was the organizer. I was the one who called everyone and said, let's do this. And now that I work all the time, I'm the no girl. My friends are like, do you want to do this? My friends asked me if I wanted to join the pick. <laughs> they asked me if I wanted to join their pickleball team. And I said, I would love to. In six to eight years when I'm not working as much. That's kind of the plan. So, okay. Next thing we're going to do is, because we did our quilting, we're going to stitch out uh, the letters in those colors. First color. And if you want to do taffy, you could do taffy. But I think I'm going to go bubble gum. Shoot. Should I go taffy? Here are my colors. What do you think? This is with taffy. And this is with bubble gum. Oh, you know what? I'm going taffy. Sometimes you just have to put them together. And even now, I'm not, I'm not convinced that I should be doing taffy. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Patrick and I had a tough weekend. We
we had um, poor Patrick. Patrick's weekend was tougher than mine. Uh, you know how he was sick. Number one, he was sick. And I was worried because it was, it was so violent. And uh, he had had a colonoscopy net last Monday. My dad's a, my dad, my brother, well, my dad is a physician, but my brother is too. So I called him in the middle of the night because he's in Denver. And I was like, I didn't want to call him because I didn't want to wake him up, but I called him anyways. And I was like, he's super sick. Could this have to do with his colonoscopy? And uh, my brother was like, no. He's like, he's got food poisoning. And, um, but he's been like sick all weekend. You know how usually it's, you eat dinner in the middle of the night, you got it, and then it's over, but you don't feel great the next day, but you're the day after that you're on the med. Patrick still is still pretty rough. <gasps> oh my god, Carol, you have an H mark? I guess I think Sacramento has an H mark. I could probably go there. Annetta, I am available. Call me at the store. And ladies, if you ordered uh, Life in Full Bloom, they're going to ship tomorrow. I got my fabric in. traveling back to because we were in uh, southern Thailand it was the day that we were traveling back to Bangkok and uh, we were going to be in Bangkok I think for like two or three days um, next color I'm going to use tide water that's going to be this one uh, I was like on the we took a long you take it like a long boat I was throwing up off the long boat I was throwing up at the airport. I was throwing up on the airplane. I was throwing up the entire way. It was, I remember laying in like an ant hill, like in front of the airport, because I just couldn't even get up and move. It was horrible. Patrick uh, didn't get sick until we got to the hotel. And, um, and that night when we got there, we went out. We didn't want to eat any more Thai food. We went to uh, TGI, <laughs> TGI, TGI Fridays, uh, TGIFs. And I can't remember what we got, but we were like, we couldn't even do it. Still one of the best trips I've ever been on, but we paid the price. Is it expensive to go there? Is it expensive to go where? H Mart? Ranch 99? The great thing about doing this on your tent needle is we would have just set up this design. 
we would have just loaded in our colors. There's 12 colors for this. Um, but we would have just loaded in our colors and uh, programmed it to go to whatever needle and we would have been done. like fun carol yeah that's like <laughs> i don't know if you've ever watched those shows but you know when people travel abroad you can get some scary scary stuff you can get scary stuff here the worst that was the worst thailand but i did get sick in korea too and uh that was seafood and it was it was a soup and it was little baby clams and I ate all of mine, and then I asked my cousin if I could eat his too. <laughs> that was what got me sick. They were so good. So bad, though. You know what I think is crazy? I have two girlfriends. I mean, we, you know, you grow up in New England, you grow up on seafood. I have two girlfriends from college, and they have both developed allergies to shrimp. That would make me so sad. I love shrimp. Okay, next color is going to be, I'm going to be using aloe. If you want any of these colors, I order from Glide. Um, well, it's Haberdash. It's the distributor. I order from them. Uh, probably a couple times a month. So I can always order you colors a la carte so you don't have to get the whole thread set. When I stitch out my black, I'm just going to throw in, I am going to put in a black bobbin. So if you don't have a black bobbin, you might want to just wind one. You don't have to, but I don't know. Sometimes you there's it's so high contrast between the black and the white, you might see a little pin dotting. Donna, you are lucky. I thought everyone has had food poisoning. So after Patrick got the food poisoning, we had pizza that we brought home from the store and it stayed out. It stayed out. And I was like, I looked at it and I was like, should I just eat this? Because usually I'll just eat it. But he was so sick. I was, we ended up throwing it away and I never do that. I just eat everything. joining us from today. Okay, go ahead and put your aloe in. Isn't this fun? This one's going to be so easy. I'm not going to do anything wild and crazy. Next project we're going to do, the next thing I have uh, scheduled, we're going to do this so long, it's going to be, um, it's going to be this Monday and next Monday. And then I'm going to record the borders and putting it all together uh, because um, the following Monday I will be in, uh, my kids are on spring break, so Violet and I, well, the whole family, we're going to be in Vegas. So Violet and I will be flying back. I could do it maybe in the, in the, like, the evening when I get home. Let me think about that. Donna, I can't believe you've never had food poisoning. You must, you must practice good food prep and <laughs> prep. practice it. You just must, you must be very vigilant. developing these allergies later on and when I told Patrick that um, my friend Jill and Lynn were allergic he said it's the iodine so I don't know he must have read something about that you'll get caught up Carol this one's gonna be a piece of cake I 
mean, you've seen what we've done so far. No biggie. Filler blocks. Those are going to all be easy, too. Oh, my God, Deb. We are going to see... Um, we're going to go see Taylor Swift. So... I'm a fan of Taylor Swift. My daughter is like the biggest fan of all. So I'm so excited. The first concert I, was it the first concert I ever took Violet to? I can't remember. Um, I went to go see Taylor Swift with Violet in San Francisco with my friend Sage. And uh, she was little. She was maybe, maybe she was like seven or eight. She might've been a little bit older than that. Maybe she was no no older than, than 10. And um, she barely knew, like, I don't think she really even knew Taylor Swift's music. She knows every song. Like, that is what she plays 24-7. When she's listening to music, she's listening to Taylor Swift. So it's just exciting because she loves her so much. God, Donna, that sounds horrible. Like a mass poisoning. You know what? I wouldn't have gotten food poisoning at that event because I don't like mushrooms. Would have saved me. But I, but I might have eaten it just because it was fried. Because I love anything fried. Ah, Annette, I love potlucks. I love potlucks. I love buffets. I love everything where you can just have a little bit of everything to eat. Because I always find that when I go out to eat with my friends, something on their plate looks really good. And if it's my family, I can just ask them and make them give me some, but you can't do that with your friends. Not all of them. Okay, get ready for the, it's gonna outline the W and then we're gonna do the happy and that's gonna be black. Again, I'm gonna be using a matching black bobbin for this. And the next thing we're gonna stitch out is going to be the pink cushion. I didn't add this to the, um, your notes, but if you're just joining us, I want you to go ahead and I want you to, where's my, Pink cushion. If you haven't done it yet, I want you to put shape flex on the back of your um, velveteen. And that's just going to help the fabric from uh, not fraying and sh the shredding. If you go near the edge like this kind of stuff, do you see that? How easily it just comes apart. So um, it's just rule of thumb for me. Anytime I use velveteen, I always back it with shape flex. So if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and do that. I love potlucks, and I really love going to, I don't know, I like potlucks where it's like just good old American food because I don't cook some of that. So I love like a potluck that has macaroni salad, potato salad, um, I love stuff like that. Good morning Cheryl, glad you're joining us. Were you busy with the uh, trouble watching the grandkids? Yeah, my I do. I was I was. I, um, 
But it's fu it's funny because we all ate the, the same food. We went to a new restaurant. There's a new restaurant over here. And I'm sure that's where Patrick got it. And we got the chicken. Violet and I had like the tiniest little piece. And I was like, oh, that's... And it, to me, it even looked like a little undercooked. I was like, oh, I'm not eating any more of that. Patrick ate so much of it. <laughs> Poor Patrick. Oh, my God. I shouldn't be laughing. He ate so much of it. And so I'm sure... Like, I, because I said... I talked to my brother. I was like, this is what we ate. But we all ate it. And uh, he's like, no, it wasn't that. And I was like, he had... We had the chicken. <laughs> He's like, it was the chicken. And it was their, well, first of all, it was, so this new restaurant, you can buy a family meal. And it's a rotisserie chicken, um, but it's this gourmet place. So the family meal, the rotisserie chicken was $79.99. And then it came with um, all of these sides. The potatoes are amazing. And it came with like a little salad and some, you know, hummus and some, breads and stuff like that I ate it and I was like you kidding me I should have just gotten a $5.99 rotisserie chicken from Costco those are way better they taste I mean it would have tasted way better it would have been like $5.99 I don't know if they've gone up in price and uh that's what I said to Patrick afterwards and then he ended up getting really sick too poor guy potato salad day. I love it. I love it. I eat everyone's food. I eat wherever I go. I don't think about it and I eat whatever is put out as long as it's, you know, something, as long as it's not mushrooms. Oh, he's keeping it, he's keeping it pretty gentle on the stomach right now. All right, after we do this, we are going to do the pink cushion. Let me see what we have to prep for that. This is going to be six minutes of stitching. This is a good time to tidy up, although I've just been sitting here reading your comments and chatting with you. Let's see if my arm... I don't know. I don't know what is up with this. There we go. Okay. So, as far as this is concerned, look it, and then we're done with these. Now I can take this off, throw it back in my cabinet. I um, don't like prepping because I'm lazy, but I love when everything's prepped. I think Patrick should, <laughs> Patrick, should, I should make him prep for me. Um, but I love that I can just like grab this now and it's just like ready to go. So I guess I I like prepping. It's not it's nothing bad. While I was prepping last night, I was watching um, is it called Daisy and the Six? And it's an Amazon um, it's an Amazon series and it has the the gal in it who's like fantastic. She's the granddaughter of Elvis. And she's, I think that's her real singing. She's, she's just, she's fantastic. Okay, we're going to do the pink cushion. Uh, we're going to do that in the 5x7 hoop. White thread for our quilting. And this is our design. And this should be everything we need. Let me go ahead and check that and make sure. Oh, no. Shelly, do you have a generator? Are you, I was wondering what was going on up in the mountains uh, with this storm. I was wondering, because, you know, we've just had rain down here. So I was wondering if you guys were having all snow or if you were having rain or what was going on up there. Um, here's your little thread. I wasn't going to cut this, but I think this gets sewn down while we're uh, stitching this. Eight inches. Here's your background fabric right here. I think this is called honeycomb. This is like the pink one. Uh, you're going to need this fabric. So these are going to be the fabrics for your pink cushion, the velveteen, and this. I love this. I love this because it, you know, so it looks pink, but it also looks red. I just absolutely love this new fabric. Uh, your 4x6 piece of batting. 
you're going to need flux foam. So I didn't cut my flux foam. I'm just using regular Pellon flux foam because I have so much of it. The Kimber Bell flux foam is a little thinner. It's like not quite as puffy, but this will work just fine. And I rarely cut this down ahead of time. Um, I usually just cut it as I go. And your green embroidery floss. And we are, I'm again, going to put this in my 5x7 um, with the muslin. Kimberbell Flex Foam. And then this is Pella. So you're going to see it's, it's skinnier. I'd say it's probably, what do you think? Maybe two thirds? Two thirds as skinny as it. So that's going to be the difference between the Kimberbell stuff and just like regular Pella. And I, I like have all these scraps because sometimes it just needs like the tiniest piece and I hoard. You all know that about me. Did you guys already order? Yeah, bananas, rice, applesauce. You know, when I was a kid, you guys are making me hungry. <laughs> um, um, you know, when we had our kids, they got a really bad stomach bug. And I didn't know about the brat diet. So Kai wouldn't stop throwing up. And every time he threw up, I was like, oh, my God, he, we need to keep him hydrated. So I make him like drink more water and then he just throw it up again. That's when I learned you need to let them rest their stomach. Oh, no, I forgot that, Annetta. I didn't. Did I? Send me a note and I'll put it. I'll send it out with your with your next step. I totally forgot about that. I'm so sorry, Annetta. I'll get that sent out. Blythe, I'm excited for Falling for Autumn. Nothing like a good old fall quilt. the bags um so i have a couple different bags so cora just asked about the bags that i use to organize i have a couple different ones and i got them all from amazon so whoops darn it this thing is driving me crazy i have these and these are the game note ones i would get these because they have all i mean there's so many different manufacturers that make this I ordered one and I want to say it was like it began with an S and the plastic on that one was cheaper. So I kept these. So I have these, which I love. And like I said, they're game note. I need to create like an affiliate link with uh, Amazon because you can do that too. The other ones I use, I have these little ones and I love these too. I really wish there was like a medium size, but I have these as well and I put my filler blocks in those. So these I just marked up and put my filler blocks in them. They didn't, I couldn't find like a medium size. So it was either like big or it was like little, but there was nothing in between. So if anyone finds like a good medium size one, let me know because I would love that. So, um, so these are the sleeves. I want to say they're just called like clear pocket protector or something like that um and and teachers use them like i think a lot of teachers use them that's what they show you know their pictures all right that one is done yay and they cut they have all different colors and you can get like solid ones we're gonna go back into the i think we're back into our five by seven 
and we're doing the pin cushion. So let me go and unhoop. And this is like, now that we have one on here, you could cut this. You always want to leave one on. That's what allows you to hoop so closely. For me, I kind of like it so that a little bit of this is underneath this part of the hoop. And that's kind of my gauge. That's my gauge for whether or not I'm close enough. Just like that. You see there's like a little bit peeking out. I'm just gonna gently pull in here and we are ready to pincushion. Let me slide this on the machine. Before I slide it on the machine, I still have my um, black thread in the bobbin, so let me switch that out. Poor Patrick. <laughs> so Patrick. Okay, so I was at the store working. He's like, you need to come home. I need you. Because <laughs> the, the dogs. So I came home, and um, he was like, get the dogs out of here. Because they <laughs> were in the bedroom with him. And, and so I shut the door because I didn't want them bothering him. Well, and then I went, you know, we are, are like kind of family room, TV rooms, all the way at the other end of the house. Our house isn't huge, but it's at the other end. And um, I guess he was calling for me. He said in between throwing up, he was screaming for me and I couldn't hear him. I shouldn't be laughing because I was busy watching Daisy and the Six and I was really into it. And at one point I was like, did I hear him? I don't think so. And then finally, like, I don't know if he opened the door and he was, I felt so bad though. Because I guess he was like, he needed me. Um, and I was too busy watching TV. Okay. Uh, don't tell Patrick. Don't tell Patrick. I should have just turned it way down. Um, there's our quilting. Quilting stitch. It's going to be hobby six. The four by six. Hobby. Whoop, was that hobby six? Was there more than one hobby? Nope, that was it. I'm P E S and we want the four by six. Uh oh. Uh oh. So this is radio. Oh, wait, here it is. There was another one. I missed it. Four by six. So um, I have the educator bundle. So they, uh, you know, we pay for it, but they give us just what you need for the project, which is what I think they should do for you ladies and gents. I said that to them. I was like, you know what would be nice? Like, don't give them the whole bundle. You don't have to give them everything. Give them the quilting sizes that they need for the project because I it's expensive. So I know it's like, for me, it's a bummer that you and I, because we, uh, as retailers, Sometimes they there's a an educator bundle that they that we can buy, but a lot of times we have to buy the quilting designs and we buy it at retail. So stuff like that, like any of the designs and stuff um, that aren't available for us to sell, we pay retail for that stuff too. Okay, pin cushion. We're gonna add. Don't move this yet. We move it after we combine. And pin cushion. So for um, uh, the life in full bloom, the retailer has to pay retail for that. I'm like, really? We do too? Here we go. Set, embroidery. This is where we're going to move it. Now it's combined on this page. Layout, move, and I'm just gonna scoot it up. Usually I just use the move button so I'm not moving it left and right, uh, especially if I'm trying to stay center. Here it doesn't make a difference. I could have just scoot, scooted it with my finger, but I didn't. All right, um, it wants white for the quilting. Did I point to the right one? White for the quilting. So I'm gonna put that in now. The arm is either flying up into the sky or dropping down. You could make them, you know what? I didn't read any of the messages for a little bell, but I save all.
all those scraps too. Um, and I feel like I use a lot of them. There's just like, they have a lot of extra. So why not, sh why not save it and use it? Oh, I've been missing your comments. Okay, first thing, and remember, go ahead and hit layout. That's going to show you what's stitching out. And those two, those layout buttons and those action buttons uh, are right behind. So as you hit it, the layout comes to the front. Hit it again, the layout goes to the back. I'm going to go here so I can see what's stitching out, and that's going to be my placement stitch for my batting. Go ahead and spray your batting, and you can spray all those background pieces too if you want. The 35 pack. Um, I have no idea. I did buy a bigger pack. Because more is more, right? I wanted more. Let's go ahead and spray all this your goodies. This is going to be, I might as well just spray it all, right? Sometimes I don't because, see all those little red pieces on my batting? I should get those off. Because that's the kind of stuff that could shadow through. And I wouldn't worry about it, but this is a light fabric. So I don't want that showing. And that's from the Velveteen. Velveteen is messy. It's just messy stuff. Sometimes I will... Um, I'll source like other velveteen. I have really not been able to find any. The velveteen, the Kimberbell velveteen is really, really nice. That's the kind of thing I want to touch. I want to feel. And nowhere in town. There's no place here in town that ca carries it. Do you see this? I did not notice that. Do you see I have that dark piece right there? Um, pink cushion's going to go over that. Otherwise, I'd be tempted to pull up my shape flex and get rid of that. Okay, let's put our batting down first. I usually try to be really careful of that, but I must have... Oh my God. So, in the midst of it... In the midst of Patrick being sick, um, okay, we're going to skip the next couple of steps because remember, we don't need those. So that is the batting tactile. We don't need it. Background placement, we don't need it. Batting tactile, we need. Take your fabric. You're going to lay it down. I mean, this is directional, like semi-directional. You just don't want it to be all cockeyed. Just feel underneath before you press it down. Make sure you have, like, you can feel your batting. Like right here, I don't have a ton, but it's going to trim around that placement line. So I'm just going to push it down. It's okay. It's probably like half an inch here and like an inch and a half over here. Do your tack down. Uh, my child, Kai Mulligan, goes to a birthday party, and he doesn't get home until 3 o'clock. We're asleep, and... He's a good kid. He was just, they were playing video games. Um, when he gets home, the dogs go crazy. So he takes him out. It's probably like 10 or 15 minutes later. He comes inside. Wait, let me make sure I'm not missing your comments. Go ahead and do your quilting. The vinyl bags are so nice. What size do you want for the medium? We should, we should, I should just search those, Anna. You're right. I could get like the, the vinyl. I don't want the vinyl to stick. I wonder if like regular, just 12, um, the 12 weight vinyl, if that would stick. But you're right. I could just search the edges and make it super cute. I just want them in between those two sizes. The big one's too big sometimes. 
your comments, make sure I'm not missing anything. Anytime you see the box with the with the diagonal lines, it means it doesn't make a difference. I'm going to leave this in here. I know it's a little bit hard to see. Pay attention to where it's stitching. And we are going to stitch out where the pink cushion is. And I'm going to grab my flexi foam. Don't worry about that sound. That was just my embroidery arm hitting my book, which I have laid out up here. I can't even see it. Let's see. Oh yeah, I see it right now. So here it is. I'm just gonna lay this down. Mine's gonna be super poofy. And I don't cut this. I trim it after. I don't cut it down and then lay it down. Flexi foam doesn't really, um, it doesn't like move too much. So it doesn't buckle and make a big mess. So what ended up happening is I ended up jumping in the shower with Poppy because every time I wiped her butt, it was like a marker. And I couldn't tell what was going on. So once I got her sprayed off and, but it was not what I wanted to do at 3 a.m. It's kind of like when you get ready to go to bed with your dog and you let them out one last time and they get sprayed by a skunk. I don't know if that's happened to any of you, but it's happened to me. You're like, you gotta be kidding me. I just get ready for bed. Next thing you know, you're in there with the tomato juice. <laughs> okay, we're gonna trim this. Well, let me make sure, cause I'm not reading my instructions. My instructions say, Place the flexi foam, trim the foam close to the stitch line, and then we're going to stitch the pin cushion A placement line. All right, so we're going to trim this up. This is fat. Trim it close, but don't trim the stitch. I had uh, breakfast yesterday morning with a group of my gal friends and we've been, we met through, because we all have kids around the same age. Um, I mean, so close in age, most of them are summer babies too and they've just been friends for years. But it was just, where they're all going off to college now. Next year, they're, they're all seniors and so they're all going to college and it's just, it's not cliche when they just, when they say time flies, like, 
that it's going to go by in a blink of an eye because it has. But it's so crazy to see these kids that were, I felt like it just happened so fast. But, and it, and it's exciting. I was joking with my friend that soon she'll be, because none of us are grandparents. We're, none of us are grandmas. But she has an older son. I was like, just you watch. You're going to be a grandma soon. Be so fun. Okay. This is going to be um, the placement stitch for the first thing that we're going to lay down. Is we're going to lay down that pinkish red fabric. And quite honestly, we don't even need to do this because look, the whole thing covers over. So let's skip this. That's placement stitch. I'm going to hit the forward arrow, the down one that goes to the next step. That is going to be tack down. Remember, your orange is your tack down. We know it covers the entire tomato. So why do we have to do it? We don't have to do it. Just cover the entire tomato. Oh my God, this fabric is gorgeous. Mine's a little puffier. If you want to change your foot height, you could change your foot height. However, foot height is one of those things that once you change it, you better change it back. If you don't, make sure you don't get any puckers like I'm almost getting. Um, if you don't change it back, it will cause you to break your upper thread. So if your foot height is too high for your project, like right now, ooh, is mine catching? You're going to break thread and you're going to be super frustrated. You're not going to know what it's from. Just remember, Jeannie said... Your foot height too high can cause your upper thread to break. Hi from PA, Carol. Where in PA are you? You know Patrick's from State College, Pennsylvania. <laughs> when we, um, we're going to trim this. Are we trimming it? Let's make sure we're trimming it. Yeah. When you trim it, you're leaving those two sections and then the very, very top. So place the, trim the fabric. Okay, for, for a minute I got scared that I put down the wrong stuff. Okay, trim her up. The first time we went to State College, she goes, I live in the middle of nowhere. We're three hours from everywhere. And I was like, oh, you really are. Close to Amish country. Violet applied to Swarthmore in PA. She could end up there. Bought an apple, just reading. <laughs> so the first time my dog got sprayed by a skunk, I was teaching at the time, so I used to teach middle school math. And uh, it was, you know, it was late. We were just about to go to bed. I jumped into the shower with him, and I just started washing him with my hands. I, I didn't know that all of that stink was going to just, like, that it's the oil and it went, well, let's just say I smelled like a skunk. And that, it doesn't come off. Like, it was, it's just, you know, as you shower and I guess as you, you shed your slot, your skin sloths off, then it goes away. But I smelled like a skunk. I just jumped right in, grabbed him, started washing him. I'd never dealt with a skunky dog before. And then it became like a usual thing. He just loved getting sprayed by skunks. We had a hole in our fence and we um, we patched that up. And that's, it stopped after that. But it, it happened a couple more times. Okay. Uh, next thing it says, stitch the pink cushion placement line for the velveteen. We don't need that. It's going to go right over these spots right here. Let's skip that step. Turquoise is placement line. 
orange is tacked down, we are gonna do the tack down. Grab your velveteen. I'm gonna make my foot height go up just a little bit because it was pushing my fabric. Here's my velveteen. Let me see if I can do it to one side and let's see what I might have left. If you wanna adjust your foot height, you're gonna go here to your settings. There's two different foot heights on my machine. There's gonna be the embroidery foot height and then there's gonna be foot height, free motion foot height. This is what I wanna adjust as soon as I'm done though, I'm gonna put it back. Black means default, that's what it's set for. I'm set to 0 0.060 of an inch. I'm gonna go all the way up to, let's go up to, I'm gonna go up to 0 0.120. I can tell I made a change because it's no longer in a black box. And I'm going to go back. I'm leaving it on my screen because I'm going to change it back as soon as I'm done with this. Um, color does not make a difference for this. So I'm just going to leave it with my white. If you feel like it's pushing and distorting your fabric, just stop it. Don't let it continue. Oh, there's my baby. I just didn't want it to push as it was laying it down. I'm going to put it back to 0 0.6 and we'll see. Maybe I'll change it again, but we are going to trim this out first. So let me go ahead and pull this back. Um, these are great when you're on one layer. Sometimes if you're on two layers, I have shape flex. It might be, it might, might not. Oh, it's okay. If I can get away with my snips, I love my snips. Sometimes they're not strong enough though. Try and trim this nice and close. You want it nice and close to uh, the stitch line. It's gonna do a satin stitch, but you don't want any of the fabric peeking out. Oh, this velveteen is amazing. Did candy corn quilt shop oh when you did it I regretted that move broke a few needles when I saw the pin cushion block here I will use the flex foam yeah the flex foam is like I said it's nice because it's gonna give you poof but it's not too poofy like my pelon is pretty poofy and we were we were actually out of flex foam at the store because I would have grabbed some so I, I just ordered more. Make sure you're not cutting anything underneath. And uh, stabilizing your velveteen is going to, it's gonna save you some heartache. You wanna get nice and close. I don't know if I'm totally close enough. Sometimes holding up your fabric at a 90 degree angle is gonna, allow you to get really really close I'm not super close right here I might go back in <laughs> we had a dog trainer come to our house and she was like are you the type of people <laughs> and we started laughing um, you hold the treat bag and shake it and call your dog's name I do that all the time. I was like, oh my God, that is totally me. <laughs> I was just thinking about that because Patrick just uh, said the the word ball and that'll like Momo loves us just throwing his ball in the TV room. He He's such a good catcher. I, okay, I thought all dogs could catch and... Uh, I will throw things at Poppy and she doesn't even try. She can't even like track. I, I like 
I gave them like a little piece of cheese. I'm going to go in with my other scissors just to make sure I'm in nice and close. I threw her a piece of cheese and she didn't even try to catch it. It like fell on top of her nose and broke in half. It was like a little piece of Parmesan. Broke in half and like fell on the ground and then Momo ate it. I think she just looks pretty. She can't, she's, she is not an athletic dog. She can run and she's She's fast. I do not feel like I'm getting in there close enough. Maybe that's close enough. The satin stitch for the green looks pretty thin to me. I just don't want this peeking out. Okay. We're going to go with that. Hopefully that is close enough. All right. Um, now it says, isn't that just, it's so pretty. We recommend using a fray preventative to reduce fraying. I'm just going to do this. I have the Shape Flex on the back. That is going to be my fray preventative, I guess. If you don't, if you don't back it, I don't want to say you're going to regret it, but you may regret it. So just back it with something. We are going to go ahead and put in our green, and I'm going to put in aloe because that's going to just have the best contrast. We're going by the book. Uh, use, it used to make a difference because they used to kind of jump around, which I don't know. I thought was like, I don't want to say weird, but um, now they're they're uh, they're putting the designs in because I like to do sections. I like for us to do a sew along, you to be able to finish those blocks in that section and just have it go in order. And I've noticed that's what they've been doing. Something I noticed that I think is new is that they put in the fabric numbers. They put in F12, and then you can turn to the page before, and you could check your fabric. All right, this is going to do the satin outline, and then we're going to stitch the back leaves detail, and this is all going to be in green. So step number 7, 8, 9, and 10 are all going to be in the same green. Right here. 
step number six. There's a little piece of metal that goes on top of six that holds your thread in. And sometimes when people change needles, they hit that and it slips underneath this arm. And that'll cause you to shred thread. Th those are like easy things that you can check. And foot height, you can check your foot height too. I don't know if you know this, but if you use a cotton bobbin, if you're using a cotton bobbin in embroidery, that can cause your upper thread to shred too. Sometimes we'll just throw whatever bobbins in in the store. And um, if I'm shredding thread, I'll check that bobbin and just make sure, because we'll, we have, uh, we use pre-wounds in the store in our, in our bobbins a lot. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'll get a cotton one mixed up with my uh, regular Filtech polyester one. So I'll check that too. Did you do all the scissors? I did. I'm so fast. No, I'm just kidding. We only did one. Because I want to be able to get to the, um, I want to get to the filler blocks. So we're kind of cruising through. Once we did one, you guys know how to do the other one. So we only did one. We have done scissor one. So happy. Now we're on the pink cushion. Then we're going to do the flying geese. That one's going to be one that, you know, I want to walk you through. And then we're going to start doing some of the filler blocks. We'll get through as much as we can. The goal is to have everything done for section one and two and everything sewn together for the next class. How do you make the foot go up? Um, I'm not going to do it right now because we're in the middle of the stitching, but I'll show you when this is done. You do it in your settings. And if you have your embroidery arm, it'll go right to your embroidery settings. And there is uh, embroidery foot height. Embroidery foot height is different than sewing foot height. It's going to be different. And Cheryl's right. There is, uh, on the Luminaire and Solaris, there is an automatic fabric sensor that's going to adjust. But that is only going to be in the sewing. consistent tracking it with her eyes and then we throw it at her and a cut there was like she would kind of try to open her mouth and catch it but she didn't even do that oh do you think it would look prettier with just the red you could do just red red might be gorgeous the green is pretty high contrast but i love it to me, it looks like, you know, like a couch, like a, like a velvet couch. It looks just rich. Um, velveteen did not come in the fabric kit. Velveteen came in your, um, it came in your embellishment kit. So get your embellishment kit. It's in there. just put a one inch and three inch on the spreadsheet I just leave them long I just I don't even measure I just want to make sure that it's longer and I'm not afraid of like abutting my batting or even like abutting it like this or having it like a little bit on top that doesn't bother me either so I would just cut strips just cut strips and we can cut them down as we go or you can just leave them like long like that to do I, I mark my bobbins too um so if I think I'm gonna like it might confuse me like the most important ones to mark are your vanish because these are the ones that are going to if you get it wet it's just gonna disintegrate but uh sometimes I'll mark see with my with my um I don't you know I don't really mark it actually because it's a little bit thicker and it's a little bit I don't want to say furrier let me see if I have one 
Okay. I think you can tell the difference here. This one is going to be... Do you see this one? See how it's a little... Not like fibrous. And this one's smoother. So I can kind of look at it and tell. But if you feel like you might get confused, definitely mark them. Mark them and that'd be good. Put a C on it and then you know that's going to be for your... Uh, well, what's the C for? Cotton. C for cotton. Yes. And then you'll know it's your cotton bobbins. I like the green too. Spreadsheet. Uh, Carol, I emailed it to you. I think you should have gotten your email. Anyone that bought um, Oh So Delightful, I emailed last night after I did the spreadsheet. This is all the same green. I'm just going to hit start. I sat down and... I want to say it was, oh my God, it was a lot. It was like 127 people. I just went through everyone who had ordered. I should have just like gone through and just, you know, I will tag you sometimes. And um, I should have just put everyone in the group. But now I figured I could just cut and paste from this group. So I emailed you the spreadsheet. I also posted the spreadsheet to the Facebook group, um, to the A1 Solong group, and it's under files. If you didn't get the spreadsheet and you're having trouble finding it, email me and I'll send it to you. I'm just going to hit start. Wait, is it start again? This one is, so we just did, where's my book? I don't want to lead you astray. I was just laughing because um, the satin outline, we just did this. The back leaves detail, I think. Now, okay, place the green floss so the end overlaps the bottom of the leaves a quarter of an inch. Okay, got it. With the long end of the floss towards the left of the hoop, tape the floss in place as shown and stitch the floss tack down. Remove the tape from the short end of the floss only and stitch the leaf front. Okay, so we're going to take our floss. Good thing I just didn't just keep stitching. And it wants you to place it. So the long end is going to go to the left. This end is going to go up here. And it's just going to tack it down. I'm not even going to tape it. I'm just going to hold it down like this. Hopefully it doesn't push it. I'm going to put my finger here just in case it pushes it over. No, it was fine. Oops, you didn't even see that. Sorry about that. I just held it down, but go ahead and tape. You can tape. And then it wants you to uh, stitch the floss tack down, remove the tape from the short end of the floss only, and stitch the leaf front detail. I'm just going to go ahead and just hold it like this, and I'm going to stitch the leaf detail. I'm going to keep it taut to the left side. Carol, I'm pretty sure... I want to say 95% sure that you were on that list and you should have that spreadsheet in your email. It was just from last night or yesterday. Oh, did they have you stitch the entire thing, Renata? Wow, was that, how long did it take to do that? trim the threads that are popping up. If that bothers you, stop it. You can trim those threads now. And then you're going to need your gray thread. Now you have two different gray threads in your kit. You have coin and you have um, lead gray. Which one do you think? I'm going to go coin because it looks more silver to me. 
And I'm also going to just cut these little threads that are sticking up. I don't want them to get in the way. Oh, it sounds like it's raining outside. <laughs> Our yard is a mess. I've never... I've never seen our yard look this bad. It feels, I feel like it's like a wet sponge. Our lawn is like a wet sponge. Here we go. Stitch out the needle. This is step number 11. And then you're gonna stitch the thread detail and that's gonna be in red. And look, they show these. They show these going into your pin cushion. But the pins are so cute, I'm not going to put them in there. I've got to keep those in my stash. They're just adorable. Cheryl, I am... I'm pretty sure I sent it to you, too. Um... But I will, I'll look again. If you got it, you got it. There's nothing else. But if you need it, let me know. I do become slightly delirious in the late evenings. Uh, and sometimes I imagine that I did things that I didn't do. All right, let's go ahead and put your red in. It sounds like it's raining, but I don't see any rain. I wonder if Patrick's out there. It looks like fall outside in my yard. My yard's so bad. Okay, this is uh, the thread. Look on your screen too. You can always look at your screen. Make sure it's stitching out what you want it to be stitching out. That definitely looks like thread. This pink cushion is adorable. And then you're going to stitch the trimming guides. You don't have to, well, just keep this out of the way. The tr trimming guides are going to be on the very top and the very bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it stitch out in the red. Can I ask a question about machines? Absolutely. What would you like to know? Six hours. Well, that sounds like fun. Oh my God, six hours on Tuesday and seven hours on Wednesday. Oh yeah, King Star Silver would have looked, you know what, I wish I thought of that. I wish you had asked me. I would have done that. You're right, do King Star Silver. That's gonna be so fantastic. I didn't get it and found it on faith. Cora, Cora, Cora. I have to look. I'm going to check. You know what? I could have gotten screened out too. It went to 100. I want to say it went to 127 people. So I could be in your junk mail. Sometimes when um, emails, bulk emails, they look at that as like junk email. So I might have gotten screened out. So you could check there too. All right. We're done with that. Yay. What's next? On to the next. If you need a potty break, take it while we're stitching. Because I just keep going. Next one. There's our tomato. Let's see if the arm will stay down. What do we have next on the agenda? Next thing is going to be, oh, flying geese. All right. Normally when I back everything, I go through um, this list right here. And I highlight anything that says background. But flying geese. You don't want to back that fabric. I did highlight it just because I was in, um, I was just on autopilot. But when I read what it was for and when I looked at it, when it's for the piecing stuff, I wouldn't back it because it's just going to get really, really thick. It's really the background pieces for um, the embroideries like this. So let me go ahead. I'm going to unhoop because guess what? I think we're still going to be in our five by seven. Flying geese. Five by seven. So if you were to prep your stable, like what I used to do is I used to cut pre-cut all my stabilizer. And if I was using the five by seven, I would use my 12 inch stabilizer and cut nine inch pieces. So this would have been um, 
12 by 9. Like one piece so far, it would have been like this. One piece, another piece. So three would have been 36 inches that I would have used. And what hooping it this way, we've used like 24 inches. So you've saved like a hooping. And you don't have to do it like this. And I know some people don't want to be bothered. And if you don't want to be bothered, I'm totally cool with that. I might at some point be like, I don't want to be bothered. Maybe I'll just pre-cut everything. Okay, I'm hooped up and ready to go. Let's grab our flying geese one. And I think I put that in a little one. One of my little pouches. Or did I? Cross stitch hearts, iron, spool of thread. Here it is. Here's my flying geese. I just put it in this little, this little itty bitty. We'll call them itty bitties. Okay, I'm going to slide my hoop on. And we're going to load it up. Color's not going to be making a difference because we're going to do flip and fold. So if you want to do, um, leave that gray in so you can see it, you could do that. At least I think, let me look at my instructions. It's been a while since I've done flying geese in the hoop. Did I miss any comments? Janet, Cora, um, Cheryl. Okay, Susie, that's a good question. Which machine is better, the Solaris or the Luminaire? Let's load our design and then we'll talk about it. Um, so I think it's important for you to understand the relationship between Baby Lock and Brother. Baby Lock is a distributor, so they don't make their machines except the sergers. They manufacture and distribute their sergers, and their sergers are the best sergers. There's like Baby Lock sergers, and then there's everything else. As far as the machine goes, they distribute. So my Luminaire is made by Brother. The Solaris is made by Brother. The Solaris and the Luminaire are exactly the same machine. Like if you were to take off the casings, you wouldn't know which was the Solaris and which was the Luminaire, except the built-ins. There's going to be different built-in designs. I always tell people, let me go, where am I going? Um, I ask them, when people come into our store, because we're a baby lock and a brother dealer, I say, are you, do you, it, do Disney designs make a difference to you? Do you want Disney designs? We're going to load radio lines to four by six. Here it is. And we want the four by six. Four by six. So when I decided, when I was deciding which one to get, um, I am not a Disney person. Um, and then we're going to load the flying geese on top of this. So go add, don't move that yet. I am not a Disney person, but I said to myself, oh, what if, I want to stitch something out. What if somebody wants something Disney? And so I ended up getting the Luminaire because I wanted the ability to stitch Disney in case I wanted to do a Disney quilt or something. Um, the lining up, as far as this, this goes, it says um, line it up. The alignment should be so outside tack down lines or al are aligned. If you just bring them in and you don't move them, they're going to be right where they need to be. Don't move them, just bring them in one, the background quilting, and then the flying geese on top of it, and it should be perfect. Then we're gonna go embroidery, and I'm gonna go layout, move, and it's the tiniest bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and scoot it all the way up. So we're good. So get either one, get either one. There is a difference. Okay, the other thing we will ask people in our store is we'll ask them if they're interested in scan and cut, or if they have a scan and cut, or they're gonna get a scan and cut, Scan and Cut is going to, um, like the newest Scan and Cut, talks to the Luminaire. So, and you know, if you have a Solaris, it's not a big deal. You might have to put it on a USB and then into your uh, Scan and Cut and vice versa. But um, they will talk to, I think they're going to integrate. So if you're interested in Scan and Cut at some point, I would get the Luminaire because they're going to talk to each other. Um, are we ready? This is going to take some concentration. So I may not be looking at your notes. Um, 
So Susie, get either one. Uh, it might be like, what dealer do you have in town? Um, the other thing I'll tell people is I'll say, look at packages. Depending on when you buy your machine, there might be a package. And so maybe the Luminaire has a better package. Maybe the Solaris has a better package. Um, so look at, if you're looking between Solaris and Luminaire, do you want Disney? Are you going to have a scan -and cut Is there a package? Um, what kind of support are you going to get in, in your area? If you get it from us at the Quilt Show, we can support you wherever you are. I'm going to look at your, your um, comments one more time and then we'll get started. The Luminaire has Disney. Yes, they are the same. Solaris has nice built. Yeah, built-in design. So Luminaire is going to have Disney and Solaris will have a category that's celebrities. So they'll have a different category of beautiful built-in designs. Do you pre-wash your muslin? No. I, I say either pre-wash everything or don't wash anything. One or the other. The playbook, you could use that with your Solaris too. Um, yes, we do. Your playbooks, we had to order more. I'm hoping we'll have them at the end of the week. Um, Renata, if you have a love-hate, you should take some classes with Michelle Gilmartin. She's just absolutely fantastic. People come and ask Scanica questions. I'm like, oh, you lost me at Scanica. Let me get Michelle. <laughs> I'm a scan and cut. I, I, and I'm going to be a scan and cut expert someday. Okay. Here is all your fabric. This is going to be quilting in the hoop. So let me grab this. You need to have, these are going to be the background pieces right here. There should be six of them. These are going to be your flying geese. And here is your batting. Batting is going to fit perfectly. Everything is going to kind of fit like perfectly for this. So first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and um, da, da, da. I'm going to put white in. So should I put white in? It's going to be a little hard for you to see, but I am going to go ahead and put my white in. And look at my little thing came off immediately. So, but I know that this is my white glide. I just bought it. This can be confusing. You can do your your um, flying geese. You could do it on no show and then put it up here later to do your quilting. But you can do it all at once. You've got to really pay attention to your steps. So first step I'm going to do is I'm going to do the placement stitch for my batting. I'm going to give my batting a shot of spray. You're not going to see it. I'm going to do it off screen. that out you just have to remember that once you're done with the uh flying geese the flying goose the flyer whatever you want to call it that you're going to go back and you're going to do that step and you have to remember that you're not going to do it right now okay so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this down and we are not putting down background fabric so we are going to skip the next couple of steps if you want to do this whole block separately now you would go ahead and lay it down um, well, actually, you do your placement stitch for your background fabric. You would lay it down, and then you would do your quilting. We are going to go ahead and skip steps. So now that we have our um, batting down, I'm going to say okay here. I'm going to go into this step, and now I'm going to go forward. This is tack down for your uh, batting. We don't need to do that. Placement stitch for your background fabric. We're not going to do that. Tack down for your background fabric, and then quilting. We're going to skip all of those. We're going to go into this. This is going to uh, give you your template. So first thing it's going to do is it's going to stitch your template for placing down all your pieces. Just go ahead and stitch this. Make sure it doesn't push your batting either. If you want to put your foot height up, if your batting's really thick and you want to put your foot height up a little bit, you could do that. But this is the template. My fabric's over a little bit. I'm not worried about it. Don't worry about it. Margaret. 
her washes her stuff for garment sewing. That makes sense, right? Because it's probably going to, like, shrink up or something. I'm so lazy. Uh, you can tell I just didn't lay my batting down totally straight, but it's going to be fine. Um, I'm so lazy. I used to... I used to wash everything. That was like part of my process. It was like, you know, I just loved it. I loved getting my fabric and throwing it all in the laundry, washing it, and then I would iron it and do all sorts of stuff. Watch that foot, make sure it doesn't get caught and push your, push your batting around. Um, and now, yeah, I don't do any of that. Nothing gets washed. Okay, so we just did this. We stitched the piecing template directly on the stabilizer. We did it on our batting. Now we're gonna place the goose one fabric right side up, completely um, centered over section one. That's section one. Grab that light fleece piece, give it a shot of spray, and we're gonna lay it down. Completely cover it. It's going to sew right down that edge. That is going to be your trim line and your placement line. Stitch the trimming placement line. Trim the fabric close to the trim line. Oh, I was a little bit close to that, but it's going to work. Okay, we're going to trim. Grab your fabric. Pretend that line extends all the way out and go ahead and trim. Now you're going to lay down, um, place one background fabric right side down. All these are the same sizes. Center it, you're gonna put it, you're not spraying, you're gonna center it face down, so right side down, and you're centering it to this stitch line right here. So you have one an equal amount of fabric on the right and the left, and it should line right up with that placement line. Now it's gonna sew your quarter inch seam allowance. So we're piecing in the hoop, this is your quarter inch seam allowance. I do spray. You don't have to. Especially if you feel like you're going to get spray everywhere. They make this like this thing where you can lay it down on top. You could get a piece of cardboard and just lay it down and like cut out a little hole and lay it down. I do spray these. I'm going to pull it back. I don't go crazy. I shield it with my hand and I just a little bit. Like, can you hear that? Like, it's barely coming out. I'm going to fold it back. I'm going to fingernail press this. And I'm just gonna fold it back. I it was like it was like barely coming out. Now we're gonna do the next trim and placement line. Go ahead and stitch it, trim it, and then we're gonna lay down another one of our background pieces. Okay, go ahead and trim this. Pretend that line magically extends all the way out. Poor Patrick looks so forward to his weekends. We all do, right? But for him to just have to lay in bed. Poor baby. All right, we're gonna lay down our next piece. Center it to the stitch that was just stitched out. Put that fabric right on that stitch line. Oh, wrong side, right side down. Right side to right side. Get, glad I caught that. That's like something I would do. Slide it back. This is your quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to give it a little shot of spray right here, and I'm going to fold it back. You can just finger press. You can finger press it and tape it. You can just do this, 
and just hold it back as it stitches. I just, I don't know. I'm a sprayer. Spraying's my superpower, so I'm pretty good at not getting it everywhere. If you feel like you're going to get it everywhere, don't do it. Just finger press it and just fold it back. I just like a nice, crisp fold. And that spray just helps hold it back. Watch right here and make sure this doesn't get pushed back by your foot. And this is your next trim. It got folded back, but it's okay. We're going to just trim this. And then we're going to place our next, next piece of fabric, which is going to be the Muse. I have been waiting for a Muse for... Um, Oh my goodness two at least two months now and I just got they just invoiced me for two bolts so I'm like yay because I've been so stressed out I'm like when's it coming I called them last week I was like okay I'm trying to be really patient I haven't called at all because I know I know they're gonna send it to me when they have it like of course they will but I was like, can you give me a little update, please? All right. It would be right side down if this had a wrong or a right side. Quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to spray it and flip it back. You could. Well, no. You, when you say could you, because you never want to spray on the right side of your fabric. So, um... I don't know. I don't know if you could do this. This is my wrong side, and then I'm going to fold it back. And you'll be able to see this. Like, I'll show you, because you can see the spray on here. Like, that's all I'm spraying. There's, like, barely anything there, and it's already starting to dry. Let me go ahead and finger press, push it back, hold it down. Now it's, we're just going to repeat the process. It's going to do a stitch on the right-hand side. We're gonna trim it, and now we're gonna lay down the uh, white with the polka dot. This is one of the new Kimberbell basics. Isn't it cute? I love it with like all the different colors in it. I just love the new line because, come on, we're, I don't wanna say I was getting sick of it, but like I needed something new. We will, I, can't, I wanna say with the um, Vintage Flora, it was maybe 40 different bolts, so I did not order all of it, but I will eventually. I ordered what I needed to do uh, the full bloom. Life is better in full bloom. Okay, I'm going to lay it down, center it to that stitch, and do your quarter inch seam allowance. Won't it be fun when we do our event and hopefully a lot of you can come to it. We can we can all meet. So exciting. Patrick has his oldest friend here in Reno, and I'm not talking about oldest in age. I mean their longest friendship. Um, they met online. They met in a chat room for uh, <laughs> for snowmobiling. And I always think it's so funny. I'm like, oh, they met in a chat room. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing on the left hand side. Isn't this perfect? And look at all your corners are perfect. Everything is gorgeous. And we don't have to do this in a separate hooping and bring it back. We're gonna do it all in one hooping and then we will add the quilting stitch on top. Why would you do it in two hoopings if you don't have to, right? Okay, and pretend like this line extends all the way out. Watch out for that batting underneath. I just cut, caught mine a little bit. That's the process. You're going to do your trim line, your trim and placement line. And trim what you can here. Doesn't make a difference. Okay, we're going to lay down this piece. 
That's your trim line. Now it's your placement line. Now you're gonna sew your quarter inch seam allowance and then we're gonna flip it over. Spray and fold. Oh yeah, be careful with your, your polka dot. I laid one of them down wrong, but I caught it. Yes, there are two different ones. One of them you're using right now. The other one is gonna be used in one of your spools. Nice and crisp, now it's gonna sew across. And we're gonna lay our last piece down, which is gonna be this one. Isn't that fun? Who doesn't love flying geese like this? Well, it'll be great to meet you at the quilt show. It'll be all it'll also be great to meet you at the OESD event that we're gonna we're switching over to the fall. So um we just like Patrick's mom called to ask when the kids graduate graduation is. And I was like, are you kidding me? The graduation is the Friday of the quilt show. So we'll have to figure out how we're gonna make that work. Okay, last piece. If it was um, direction, if it had a right side and wrong side, you'd be putting right side down, but it doesn't. Just center it, quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna flip it over and fold it. you can see how much I'm spraying here. Did you see that? It's like a little spritz. Okay, two more sides and then we're gonna be done and then also around the whole thing. Oh, I think that, yeah, I do cut with my left and my right hand and I think it's because I am predominantly a right-hander but I've always cut with my left hand, and um, my mom said that when I was in, uh, when I was at whatever in grade school, they called her because they were concerned that I was cutting with my left hand, and my mom was like, "Oh, whatever, <laughs> who cares? That's like my mom. She was the best mom ever. My so I started kindergarten early. Um, I was, I'm a, I'm a December baby." So in September, I was, whatever, four, four and a half. And uh, my mom took me to sign me up for school and they said I was too young and to bring me back the next year. And my mom said she just left me there. And that's how I started school. <laughs> she was probably like, I don't understand English. She probably said, I don't understand. And just <laughs> left me. Which my mom, I don't want to say my mom was like meek, but I can't picture, I really don't picture my mom being like, oh, whatever, I'm just going to leave you here. Like, if they told me, like, if I went to drop my kids off and they were like, they're too young, bring them back next year, I would have just brought them back black next year. I wouldn't, I would have thought, oh, there's no option. I can't break the rules. So I don't know if my mom was a rule breaker. Or maybe she did, really didn't understand them. I don't know. Kind of cracks me up. I meant spraying on the wrong side. You could pre-spray. Like, I can't remember. I did. We were doing one of the projects, and I sprayed them all at once. And uh, I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that, but it worked out, and it was fine. So, yes, I think you could go ahead and spray it all at once. I feel like the stick kind of goes away if you like pre-spray too long. And that could be just my imagination. I could be imagining it. Okay, we're gonna trim this one down. We're gonna lay down one more piece and then it'll stitch the whole out. Ooh, be careful, don't get the batting. 
felt thick for a minute. I was like, what am I catching? And I was catching the batting. Don't cut in too much because you need some of that outside for the outside of your block. All right, we're gonna lay down this last piece. Yeah, I did that. Cindy, I did that for one of them. One of our projects, I sprayed them all and it was totally fine. And then you don't have to spray in the hoop, right? Yes, you could. Because it's not like the foot doesn't like drag across it. So you could, you could totally spray the back before you put it down. And then you don't have to do this and you don't have to worry about getting it on your foot. Or you don't have to worry about heavy, being heavy handed. I'm going to fold this back. Okay. Last thing it's going to do is it's going to do an outline stitch of the entire block and then we will do the quilting. So if you look at your screen, this is step nine of nine. Be careful. I can't remember which direction it goes, but as it goes up on the sides, this so it's going to come up on this side. You just want to make sure it doesn't flip these back. Keep your finger over here on your start stop button just to make sure. That's fine. Beautiful. No issues. We're good. And then we are going to do our quilting stitch on top of that. Isn't that fun? So you don't have to do this in two hoopings. All right, let's go back to the quilting stitch. So it's telling it's done, but we're not done. And this is our quilting stitch right here. I'm just going to touch in the orange, or you can uh, go forward four steps. So I can tell that I'm still doing an outline. And there's my quilting. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start and let it do all the quilting. And then we're done with the block. Wasn't that fun? Love that. 1223, how did that happen? We're going to start some of the filler blocks after this. We do not, Carol. I still have to call my OESD rep and say, um, we're overwhelmed. We need to reschedule. So I'm going to call her this week and then we'll reschedule. And then we'll get it on the calendar. We'll let you start signing up. It'll just give us some more time. Wait, she got in on a lottery? How does that work? So Wanda, the machine will cut your jump threads as long as they're not smaller than five millimeters. If uh, the next stitch, like if it's doing lettering and it does the stitch and then it just moves over a little bit, then it's not gonna cut it. But if it's like, you know, bigger than that, it'll cut all your jump stitches. Wasn't that fun? I love flip and fold. I love piecing in the hoop. The only thing I don't love piece about piecing in the hoop is all of this extra fabric. Like it takes, there's waste. Like there's all this waste with it. But what are you gonna do? What is next? After it does the stitching for this, let me look. I still have to finish my eight, my, um, my, is it my April cuties? Cause next, so on the, I think it's the third of April, we're going to do the May cuties. And I've been waiting for that Muse fabric. So if anyone's been waiting for their kid, I've been waiting for that Muse for like all of the kids. I think I, I've sent out everyone's, I think there's one person that I'm waiting for some more fabric. All right, while it's stitching this out, if you haven't grouped up your filler fabric, I want you to do it right now. What we're gonna grab, whoops, darn it. This thing is driving me crazy. It just wants to do what it wants to do, like me. Okay, we'll see if this is gonna work. I was just thinking it out of my head as I was um, grouping everything. And I thought this was really confusing too because the, your filler blocks are numbered here, but then it has a different number here. Like filler block nine is, is 
block 14 in section 2. So we're focusing on just the block number, so don't let this part here confuse you. This is what you get if you don't count this. This is what you get when you get the, uh, when you buy the um, background quilting. That's where you're going to find these layout sheets. If you didn't get the layout sheets or you didn't print them out, I put everything here on the spreadsheet so it should all be here for you. I am checking your messages right now and make sure. I like to get the chemicals. I, you know what, Alice? Of course you pre-wash. You're, you do, you're, I, I just know everything you do is like, I'm gonna say perfect because I, I get the impression you're pretty perfect. Me, on the other hand, you're working with some grand imperfection over here. Um, I can't wait to, uh, to, I think I'm getting my furniture the weekend we go down to Vegas. I think that's when I'm going to bring it up and then I'm going to be doing, uh, we're going to do a makeover of Jeannie's sewing room. So Alice had sent me some, um, some adorable stuff for the, like some organizing stuff for my icicle thread. So I'm like super excited to use it. It's just chopping at the bit to get everything done. Okay. Oh, look how great this looks. So beautiful. So this is what we've done so far. Scissors, so happy. Pink cushion, and look at the quilting on top of that. Isn't that amazing? And all in one hooping. Then we'll trim this down. That outside line is going to be your trim line. You're never going to cut directly on that line. You're going to press, and then we're going to fussy cut to that line as as close to it as we can. So I'm popping that out. That one is done. We are going to do, and I, I, um, I played with the hoop sizes. I played with the hoop sizes. I played with the 6x10. I played with the 8x12. And I was playing and, and with the 5x7. So I think the way I did it is kind of going to be the most efficient use of space. But you can do it any way you want. You don't have to hoop and group the way I did. I was like, should I do the 8x12? Could I fit more of the filler blocks in there? Is that going to be easier? How about if we use the 6x10? How about if we use the 6x6? So I really played with it to see if we could group it the best way possible. First thing we're going to do, I just said, let's just do filler blocks. Um, oh, that's section two. I was like, what is that? We're only doing, we're doing 9, 10, and 11. 9, 10, and 11 are going to be the skinny ones. So if you look at your chart right here, they're the long skinny ones, the one by six inch pieces. These are the ones we're gonna do first. So I know it says 14, but this is nine, 10, and 11. And then we're gonna do the ones down here that go in a strip. And those are gonna be filler blocks 15, 16, and 17. So I've grouped mine together. Here's my nine, 10, and 11, and my uh, 15, 16, and 17. And then you should have your batting pieces, which should be one inch by six inch. So let's do those first. And because Patrick's sick, he can't go skiing. So I can stitch a little bit longer today. Oh, Rolo, are you excited for your new cabinet? All right. So we're going to rehoop. I'm going to just put it right down here. Oh, my God. Look at what is forcing her way through. Do you see her? Forcing her way through the door. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can come in. Just let her in. Here we go. Oh, my God. Here's my menace. Here she is, my baby. I just, she's so sweet. She is just so sweet. Till she like grabs, oh, oh, no. Nope. She does like spools of thread. Let me just get those up off the ground. <laughs> that was just like, didn't, didn't that look like a scene from The Shining? When I went upstairs last night, um, my bedroom is right above the sewing room. And so when I went upstairs last night, she was crated, which Patrick never crates her. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and I guess he said every time she heard my voice, she'd like run over to the door and start pawing at it. So he created her. She's so cute. It was constant. 
You heard her last night? It was like and when she kicks the door, she sounds like an 800-pound gorilla. It's terrifying. Like, Momo might tap it a little bit or hit it with his nose a little bit, but she is, she's like, boom, boom, boom. Come on, puppy, let's go. Momo, pops, let's go. Oh, my God. Yeah, totally not perfect. We did, so I did that apron serger class, and I thought it was great. It was super fun. Um, the project was so much fun. If anyone's interested in doing a serger project and you haven't done one before, that might be a really good one for you. Um, and when we got to the very end, I had them serge their waistband, and I, uh, I was on the wrong side. I got, you know, sometimes I'm in the flow with the project and I get a little cocky. I'm like, okay, and then we do this. And as I surge it on, I go, wait a minute, when I flip this down, you're not going to see the wave stitch. And it wasn't that big a deal. We only did like, we didn't, most people hadn't gotten to it or they didn't do the whole thing. All right. So we're going to do 9, 10, and 11 first. And um, all of these are going to have the same. I mean, it really doesn't matter which way you put it in. What matters is going to be the thread color that you quilt with. And we'll adjust it on the list as we go if we need to. Um, but we are going to load in, we're on, in our five by seven, we're going to load in all pins quilting the one by six. So I'm going to go home. Yeah, my dogs make me feel so loved because they're always happy. Sometimes my kids, I'm like, can we hang out? I miss you. And they don't want to hang out. <laughs> but my dogs always want to hang out. Okay, this is pins quilting. I think this is it. One by six. Set. And we're going to take this, and I am just going to take this one and put it all the way to the top left. I have my hoop on. Um, actually, in this screen, it will let me go outside of my embroidery field. So I'm going to go embroidery, move, and I'm just going to use my arrows. Usually I'll use my finger to get me in the vicinity and then I'll use my arrows for precise placement and that looks good. We're gonna do that again. Instead of adding, we're just gonna hit this button here that makes a copy. So just hit that, makes a copy of it. It will stitch in the order in which they're loaded. The other thing I could do is that little circle there centers it. So I'm gonna hit center, I know I'm perfectly centered and then I'll just scoot it up. And then I'm gonna make one more copy and move. I'm not gonna use my finger when you have a design on top of a design. Sometimes when you go to move it, you'll move the one underneath. The one underneath is perfectly placed, so I don't wanna move that one. So I'll just move this one with my arrows. Sometimes people accidentally move it outside their embroidery field. I'm gonna do that just to show you what happens. So let's say, it looks like I'm in there. I say okay. I go embroidery. Uh-oh, change to a larger embroidery frame. That's my cue that tells me, uh-oh, one of my embroidery designs, or all of them, or some of them, aren't in my embroidery field. That's when I'll take a second look at it. And this one, I know that I moved it outside of my embroidery field. I'm just going to tap it in, say okay, touch embroidery. And it lets me go to the next screen, which means I am in my embroidery field. That's why it's so important. That's why I really like to put the hoop size that I'm working with on my, my screen so I know what my workspace is and I don't go outside of my workspace. Um, all right, we're ready. Oh, so if you look up here too, you're going to see everything is um, everything is separate. So that's my first one, my second one, and my third one. We can color group. I can hit layout, color group. Now what you have to be careful of is your quilting colors. If your quilting colors are going to be different, this is just going to stitch them out all in one color. You can catch it. It's going to do a cut. When it's done with this, it's going to cut and it's going to go here. You can hit the stop button and then go ahead and change your thread manually. The other thing is you can assign a color and that way it's going to stop in between those. So if I were to go back to my previous screen, this is what I was thinking about. And I'm just going to play this out um, and just see if this is going to work. I'm going to hit return 
And then I am going to go to this design. I don't want to touch them because I don't want them to move. I'm just going to hit my select button. It's going to go back to that one. That one is my first one. We are doing that on, and here I have my colors here too. So coin, which is gray, aloe, which is green, and taffy, which is the pink. So I can go in here to my color list. This is where the colors are. And I can go to... So it's going to be this first one right here. And I'm going to assign a color. I am going to make that, uh, let's make that one gray. So I'm just going to pick any gray. And then I'm going to go down on my color list. This one right here. I'm going to make that one green, the aloe, which is a dark green. And, you know, pick any green. It doesn't make a difference. And then I'm going to go because I'm going to do this one. And that one, we were going to do that one in taffy, which is a pink. We'll just call it what, this one and say OK. So now those are all different colors. We're going to go embroidery. And now let's go ahead and color group. So it did that. It put together, um, this is all of my placement but then it's gonna stop for each one of these so you can put the right color down, all right? Yay, I mean, I rarely ever change my colors. I just put my thread in, but I wanted to color group and I wanted it to stop before it stitched out each of those colors. So now we get the opportunity to do your color changes. You don't have to be vigilant about just changing your, uh, it's just sitting there with the start stop button. First thing we're gonna do is gonna do the placement line um, I'm going to, you know what, I'm trying to think of what I should put down. The first color that we're going to need is going to be that gray, the coin. So I'm going to put the gray in right now. So let me take out my white, which is what I've been using. Yeah, I hope that you're learning stuff. And that was me, like, literally, I was just thinking that out as I was doing the spreadsheet. I was thinking, okay, can I color group this? And then how are we going to get it to stop and... What should I do? Is it going to work on their machines? So that all worked out. First thing, placement for your batting on all three. So it's going to do that. I want you to grab your batting and you can go ahead and give that a little shot of spray as well as your fabrics. Everything on the wrong side. Wish I had one of those fancy machines. Ah, oh, Blythe, you need to get one. Like, how does it work over in Tasmania? Like, do you have, do you have baby lock dealers over there? Do you have baby lock and brother dealers? Whoop! <laughs> how can I fix this thing? Ugh, drives me crazy. I'm gonna put this over here. It's gonna give it a little bit of weight. All right, these are the pieces that we're using. It is nice to have those features. What's also nice is knowing how to use them because I know, um, you know, I, I feel like with the sewing machine, it's, with my sewing, I learn it when, I, when it like suits me. Like it might be there and I might not know, but I go, Oh, is this going to make my life easier? I'm going to figure it out. That's kind of how I approach my, sh my sewing. Because I am, it might not seem it, I'm, te I'm technology resistant. I can't remember, oh yeah, my kids last night, they go, you know mom, something about your calendar, your settings, we get alerts on our phones. And I'm like, really? It's like, I didn't know that. I go, okay, go ask daddy. Show it to daddy. Show him what it's doing. And then tell daddy to fix it. <laughs> and Kai goes, why don't you do it? Like, why don't you figure it out? Why does dad have to do it? And I go, because it's going to take dad like two seconds to figure it out. And it's going to take me like 10 minutes. Or no, not 10 minutes. But it's going to take me forever to figure it out. So, and Patrick's so good at that stuff. 
So I am technology resistant. I don't want to learn it. I don't want to have to do it. I want somebody else to do it for me. But when it comes to my sewing, if it's going to make my life easier, I'm going to figure it out. The other thing is I don't like, Patrick always puts me off. He's always like, okay, I'll do it, but I'm going to do it later. And I don't like waiting. So I will figure it out. But stuff like that, like the phone thing, I, I was like, Oh, Dad, I'll do it for you. I haven't figured it out. It matters what order you lay it down in because the way it's going to stitch out and the quilting that you put on your screen are actually, it doesn't, you know what? It doesn't make a difference because you're going to, even though I put in gray, green, and taffy, you can put in whatever color you want when we get there. The biggest thing we wanted was we just wanted the machine to stop in between those colors. Okay, um, we are not going to do this step. This step right here is going to be the tack down for the batting, but we are going to do the placement. When you're doing filler blocks, you always do the placement for the fabric because you're laying your fabric down right inside. So there's three of those. You're laying your fabric right inside that placement line. Why did I get rid of that? So do this. And actually, I should have put my batting down later because it's going to push. It might push. So what I should have done is, um, and next time what we'll do for the next one is do step one and three and then lay down your batting so, so it doesn't push. I mean, it doesn't make a difference really. You could do this and then you could lay down your batting and your background all at once. Yeah, these, I mean, the retail on this machine is $24,000. However, if you reach out to us and you can come pick it up, it's, uh, we don't charge that. We'll always, we will always wheel and deal and we try to get people into the machine of their dreams. <laughs> Cindy, I'm going to start saying that. I'm going to be like, it's not my job. It's not my job. It isn't. That's plus Patrick's so good at it. <laughs> He's my IT guy. Oh my! I feel so lucky to have an IT guy. These I uh, oftentimes okay. These I might spray a little bit heavier because I want them to stay down on the sides. I'm gonna give my other the other ones a little bit more of a spray. Because the sides are what I'm most concerned about. I want it to just stay down. I'm going to put my green down next. Not my job. <laughs> and then this one. And, you know, I don't have any machine, like, under here. So, just do it the best you can. Next step, we're skipping because it's the tack down for the fabric. And we, it will just go right on the outside. We're going to do our quilting. So, the first one is going to be, oh, no. That's still, we're still in the orange. Now, there's the quilting. So, here we go. I have gray in for this one. I'm just gonna, I call this tickling my fabric. I'm just gonna tickle my fabric a little bit, make sure it doesn't get bunched up. If your fabric comes in and it doesn't go right to the edge, that's okay. You are going to not cut on that stitch line when you go to trim these. You are gonna, you're gonna press it and then you are going to um, use your ruler and fussy cut it out. So you have the muslin behind it. If the muslin, as long as the muslin goes out to your measurement, your one and a half by six and a half, you're gonna sew to the muslin in case your fabric is a little small. I guess you could cut these bigger too. You could have, we could have cut these down to like, whatever, like added another quarter inch and then they trimmed them down perfectly. 
Now it's going to stop and we can put in our aloe. My new motto, finished is better. You know what? I totally agree with that, Alice. That's that's why I let Patrick ship. Because <laughs> it gets done. When I ship, it's beautiful. When he ships, it's done. I'm like, oh, did you fill all the air, like empty space in? Like, did you wrap that up? Like, I want to make sure. He makes sure it's safe, too. Hopefully, right, Carol? We really try. Um, but, uh, Carol got something that was broken, so we're gonna get that taken care of. But, um, Patrick gets it done, and he, he's a doer. So cute. You can use a different color, too. Like, if you want to use white instead, I can't really even see the pen white would have shown. And this last one, what do you think? I'm going to use taffy. And I think that's what I put in the chart is taffy. Again, those colors are suggestions. Hi, Miss Ellie. Yes, I can give you a call. Did you put the fuzzy thing on the back? What's the fuzzy thing? Great. What's the fuzzy thing? The fuzzy thing on the back? Are we the batting? Did I put batting? Please clarify. So crafty. Oh yeah, I totally feel the same way. Is Alice like, it is, it is a curse because I don't get as much done because I want something to get per be perfect. Sometimes I don't even get started because I'm like, oh, well I want certain things uh, when I start a project as well. I don't know why that didn't catch. I'm going to check my bobbin. Might as well. And um, it is, it's totally a curse. Like if, if someone were to ask me, um, I'm, pr I'm really detail oriented, which I really like. And I find that as I find, even being as detail oriented as I am, I do make mistakes and it, it's not always as perfect as I want it to be. Okay, I'm going to go back to the beginning of this. So I'm just going to hit this arrow. And that goes back to the beginning of that. Always look in your little window just to confirm what you're stitching. But perfectionism for me is definitely a curse because I it makes me inefficient. And I don't get stuff done as quickly as I would like to get stuff done. any of that. I'm really lucky because this staff at the store puts up with me. Because, you know, sometimes they'll put kits together and I'm like, can you do it like this? Can you have the fabric like this? I want to see every single color when I pick it up. I want stuff to be priced a certain way. I want, you know what I mean? So, um, they entertain me. They know I can be difficult. should have done that in white because you can't even see that right so maybe I'll do a different let's try let's try different colors on the other set all right we've done one set of three you know how to do that we're going to move on and we're going to do filler blocks a uh, different filler block so I want you to do the other one on your own you know how to load it you know how to put in colors so it's going to stop for you um I'm not going to do this one right now we'll do that oh I was like What's that stitching? But it's just a piece of thread in there. Let's do something else. So, so far for your homework, you're going to be doing the scissors and you're going to be doing the other long set of filler blocks. Let's grab another grouping. 
so we have on here, we just did this set. You're going to do this set. These are just square ones. Um, let's go ahead and do one of those. That's going to be the, the 3, the 6, and the 14. That's this right here. 3, 6, 14. And you should also have the batting pre-cut, 4 by 4 pieces of batting for that. We're going to do that in the 5 by 7 as well. It looks like runes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When, you know, a lot of times I just leave all of this on here. I don't even think about it. But if you feel like it's weighting down and it's getting in the way and you don't want to drag it around, I like to flip it over to the back side. So we'll go ahead and pop this out. You always want to leave one on so you can get a nice hooping next to it. But we can get rid of this. So I always turn it to the back side so I can see my stitch lines and I cut right down the middle. And I could have done this one from the front, but sometimes you're gonna have pieces of fabric that are overlapping. Like right here, see how we're overlapping? So if you wanna cut those apart, again, turn it to the back side and you're gonna cut in between your stitches so you're not too close to one side or the other. And that's me being a perfectionist and being super anal. Because when it comes down to it, you're going to be cutting almost on that stitch line. Almost on the stitch line. So if you want to cut these apart, I don't trim them until they're pressed. So press and then trim. Because you're going to get some movement in your fabric. You want these to lay super flat. I think we've done a great job getting stuff done. My favorite, I think so far, I don't know, pin cushion or the fly. I just love this stitching that goes on top of it. I don't know. It just looks amazing. This is pretty darn cute, though. Okay. Let's hoop up again. Maybe we'll do two of those little blocks. Oh, look, I'm almost to my end here. I'm going to have to cut some more fabric. I, I only cut one of these, but that's a lot of hoopings, isn't it? All right, um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit the other one. We'll see what we can fit. I, you know what? I feel like I should do something else that takes up, well, we'll just go with it. We have stuff left over, we have stuff left over. It's fine. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and load up the design. While I'm loading up the design, I'm gonna spray which one's which whoops sorry about that where are my pieces that I just grabbed <laughs> I'm amazing at losing things so um three six and fourteen huh there's six. Did I write the wrong thing down? Oh yeah, I wrote the wrong thing down. So what we're doing is we're doing, did I? Hang on. Um, I wrote three, six, and 14, but this is three, six. Let me look at the other chart. Here we go. Filler block three is eight. That's what's confusing. Okay. Filler block three, block three is eight, which is, and of course I can't see it. It's gonna be this one. I think I put them down in order. Three, six is 11, and 14 is gonna be 20. Okay, I have them in order. Three, six, 18. So I'm gonna do three first. I might reevaluate my color. I think I want to see the quilting. There's nothing else going on on these, so I think it's nice to see the quilting. And um, in the spreadsheet, I want to say it's buttermilk. And you'll see that. So here's this, here's this. I'm going to give these a shot of spray. Let me grab the spreadsheet so I don't have to look everything up. Hopefully you enjoy the spreadsheet and you find it helpful. 
I'm going to go, um, okay, let's go home. Embroidery. Okay, three. Hearts five, four by four. Hearts five, PES, four by four, set. Um, and we're gonna, that's it. It's just a filler block, so there's nothing else to do. We're just gonna go embroidery. I'm gonna go layout, move, scoot it all the way up to the top. Okay, and why don't we go ahead and stitch out step one and three, then we'll lay down our batting and our background fabric, and then we'll uh, skip step four and we'll do the quilting. These should be quick. Now, if you really, really, really want your quilting to show, you could pick a different color. Like, I could do taffy on this. Would that just be it? Let me look at my screen. Do you think that'd be too much? Because don't you think the buttermilk might get just washed out? All right. This is where I have trouble being a risk taker. Because what happens when I take risks is it looks bad. <laughs> So I'm going to stick with, I'm going to stick with the buttermilk, the um, buttermilk. We'll see. And then I'll look at it regretfully and go, oh, I should have done something else. But we'll try it with the buttermilk. Um, Uh-oh, I haven't been looking at mes messages. The box lo looked a bit... Oh yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Did they they wrap did they wrap it up in um they bubble wrap it? Hopefully they bubble wrapped it. I had them bubble wrap everything. Okay. Placement stitch first. I'm gonna give these two a shot of spray. No the fusible thing you put on the back of the fabric for the strips. I didn't no, I didn't. So you're asking if I put shape flex on the on the I didn't put shape flex on any of the filler blocks. It didn't say to. You could have. I thought about it, but I didn't. Remember, I you know I don't spray too heavily, but I'm spraying my filler blocks a little more heavy than I normally would. Because I want them to stay down on the edges. Batting not so much. Skip to their next step. I know you don't see it on my well, let me show you. So here we are. This is tack down for the batting. That's placement for the background. We're gonna do that. You don't do that for the other ones, but you do that for your filler blocks. Do your um, do your placement for your background. And then we'll lay them all down at once so nothing gets in the way. I know when I show that part of me is embarrassed I'm like are these ladies do they think I'm crazy because I'm keeping like all of the batting came from that bag I showed you my uh, my scrap bag all of my batting came from that I use up like every little last bit for the um but I show you that stuff and I'm like oh my god do I <laughs> number one I go do I have a problem but I don't right because I'm using it and like it sounds like you're using your pieces too. I know some people can't be bothered. And I totally respect that. Because your house and your mind are probably like uncluttered unlike mine. <laughs> oh man. All right, we're skipping the next step. The next step is the tack down for the background fabric and it's gonna literally go right around the outside. So we're gonna skip that. And I'm gonna go to the next step, which is the quilting. I'm doing the buttermilk, and I'm hoping this is going to look absolutely gorgeous. Oh, my God, Ellie. You told, you just, I just read you saying thank you, and in my head I go, I already forgot that you asked me to call you. So I'll get on my email, too, so shoot me an email reminder as well. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? Oh. I was going to say I'm going to text you my, my number, but I can't because I'm on my phone right now as my camera. But um, shoot me, an, if you don't hear from me, shoot me like a little email too because I, sometimes my mind just doesn't work well. I 
I am absolutely going to do in full bloom because I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to stitch it out. I can't wait. So the next sew along is going to be Cuties April. That's, well, next sew along is going to be Oh So Delightful next Monday. We're going to do sections three and four. If I can squeeze it in, I will do the, uh, if I can fit it, I'm going to do, um, one more day where we do the border strips and putting it all together. If I can't find a time and date for that, I'm just going to do that on my own because sometimes I'll do stuff like that late at night. Um, and then Cuties May, we're going to do that the first, I think it's the first Monday in, the first Monday in April. And then we'll do uh, Life is Better in Full Bloom. But I'm definitely going to do that because I love the, I love the square pillows. I just, I love everything about them. I love that they're not too complicated. I just, the ones that she's designed have been absolutely adorable. I don't know, I love it. What do you think? Should we have gone a different color? I'm thinking yes. Because this doesn't, I feel like it looks just busy on the honeycomb. Like maybe if it was solid, it would look better. What's the, what do you, what do you think? Your instructions. I want them to be detailed. I'm like that though. So um, I'd rather give you more information than not enough. Do you know if what the next Christmas event for Kimberbell? They're going to, they have, I, I wanted to say it's a, it's like a one day event and it'll happen in the summer. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know the name of it, but I just remember it was like Christmas and it had like palm trees or something. What do you think? Should we have done this in a different color? I don't know. Um, I'm just going to look at your comments really quickly and make sure I'm not missing anything. How the muslin, I love the muslin. Stack waiting to put together. Using. Uh, so you don't, I use, so Netta, I do use stabilizer, but it de depends on the project. If I'm quilting and there is batting, and there is background fabric, then I don't, I use muslin. It just feels better and it's just, and you know, it, I think it's, I yeah, from what the ladies are saying, it's cheaper too. We sell um, 45 inch and 90 inch muslin. I'd, I'd say just get the 90 inch muslin, get like three, five, three to five yards at a time and just have it in your stash. I also have 60 inch muslin, but um, we're done with that block. I have the 60 inch. I'm going to see if I can fit one more hooping in here. Hopefully I can. Uh, I tried to order mo more of the 60 inch and they don't even have it anymore. So I think they're discontinuing that. I was probably the only one buying it, but just use the 90 inch. If, it, if you feel like it's too big, cut it down. Just cut it down and you can cut it into two pieces of 45. Let's see. I'm going to put, we can do one more hooping here, and I'm just going to scoot it down to the bottom to make sure it doesn't overlap. We can use our projector too. You guys want to see that? Use our projector just to make sure it's not going to overlap. And I am going to do, um, we just did filler block three. Now I'm going to do filler block six. That's going to be with this fabric right here. And we're going to use this. And one of the four by fours. I'll give them a spray in my handy dandy spray tent. Let me put this on the machine. We'll load it up and then I'll spray. I use stabilizer all the time. Um, just not with not with these quilted. And there might be a block that I might end up using the stabilizer, but there's like, you know, there's so many different stabilizers. There is wash away, there is uh, cut away, there's tear away. So depending on the project, but for the quilts, embroidered quilts with batting, I use muslin. Okay, I'm going to go home. Let's clear the screen. Let's say okay. 
next design that we're going to be putting in is going to be six zigzag two four by four horizontal zigzag two pes four by four horizontal it always comes in with horizontal and then vertical so if you see two by four by fours horizontal is going to be the first one set it that's it there's nothing we're combining it's just a filler block i'm going to go embroidery um i could just scoot it to the bottom but we have a projector so let's use it i also could use my camera i'm just going to project it's going to project the stitch and then i can move it wherever i want it there we go but this is the very middle of it you move your projector with your finger your design with your arrows there's my arrows so i'm going to go ahead and move this up and i'm going to see the very top oh, i could just leave it there let's just leave it so because i know i'm not going to be and my fabric's going to go right to that line so i'm not going to be overlapping or i could move my design down a little bit here you can watch the projector as i'm moving okay projector i'm gonna say it it's pretty badass the, the you have to keep in mind you have to be at stitch zero if i'm even one stitch into my embroidery designs let's say you're in the middle of your design and you go oh i want to check my check it with my projector it's not going to let you you're going to hit your projector button and it's going to go knock knock so if you ever want to check you've got to go to stitch zero the very beginning just cut your threads go hit the zero button and it'll go back to the very beginning of the design all right i know it's going to fit this one i think is also buttermilk um, fabric that we're using is uh, it's that cutie fabric I'm just gonna go ahead and start it and while it's starting I'm gonna spray my batting and I'm gonna spray my filler block liberally somebody asked me if the uh, spray is carcinogenic, it probably, just gonna be honest, probably is. So make sure you're, I say this, although my place is just a regular room, it's not like it's well ventilated. Just don't breathe it in heavily while you're spraying. We're doing this stitch placement for the um, batting and then we're gonna be doing this stitch, which is your background. So go ahead and stitch that out. And then we'll lay down our background fabric and our batting at the same time. And then we'll do our quilting stitch. Annetta, I can't believe I forgot to send out your thread. Will you please remind me? I know, you know, I haven't seen it on my desk. I wonder if somebody grabbed it and just put it on the pickup shelf. And that's why I haven't seen it and I haven't even thought about it. You can go to retreat and then you should also just do our sew alongs and just work on stuff with us. Right? It's like just scheduling the time. Make sure there's no icky threads up there. I'm gonna lay down my background fabric too. I use, I'll use a Frankenstein uh, batting too. Some, I, I, I do it with my like shape flex. If it's a dark color, I will, and this is non-directional, but just pick a way that looks directional to you. Like this to me, like these two flowers, right side up. It's hard making time, isn't it? And it's hard doing all the projects you want to do. That's why I'm so thankful for these sew-alongs because it keeps me on track. Because I have a shelf of good intentions. Okay, now we're going to do, we're going to skip the next step. The next step is tack down for the background fabric. Always look at your screen. And I'm going to do the quilting stitch. Here we go. And I'll look at some of your comments. Oh yeah, so crafty. Turn it up. There's no need to be stitching at 450. That is way too slow. Turn it up. 
turn it down. I mean, I I go at the highest speed unless I like I said unless I'm like going over a zipper or like I'm making sure that something's not going to get folded over. I'm almost always at a thousand fifty. Oh the de oh deck the palms. We're definitely going to do that event. <laughs> Channel your, yeah, ladies, if you haven't done it yet, ladies and gents, place Jeffrey's on there or Mr. Michael. Um, you want to um, make sure you put in a comment. We're giving away an iron. You do have to pay shipping if you win it, but we're giving away one of the 360s. Like, this is my iron. I use mine as not the, the 30 minute shut off. This is the one that I have, and that's the one I like, I love. Um, I just, uh, I just, I don't know why I'm scared of the 30 minute shut off. It seems so long for me for it to just stay on. But I know there's a lot of people who are like, if you're a quilter, you want the 30 minute shut off. Um, I quilt. I embroider. And, uh, but anyways, um, what was I going to say? Make a comment from Friday's live feed because that's what we're giving away. And Patrick uh, did ask a question, although we're just going to give it away to whoever whoever's name comes up. He asked if your relationship with your significant other is more based on common interests or common values or both. I think Patrick and I are like both, even though like, <laughs> you know me, I'm totally non-athletic and he's like this uber athlete, this ulti ultimate athlete. All right, you, we have one more of those, but guess what? I'm not going to do it because I want to do a different hooping. So I'm going to put it back here in the bag. This is going to be number 14. I'm going to put it on here so I know which one it is, and I'll put it on the front of the fabric. I'm just going to get rid of that, and then I won't be confused because we did three and six. We are going to do... Should we do... We're going to do one more stitch out and that's going to be it for today. But we've gotten through like almost everything. You're going to have to do two, three, and four. And you're going to have to do 15, 16, 17. We just did three and six. Let's go ahead and do one of these grouping of groupings of four. I am going to do it my six by six hoop. It's fit perfectly. If you don't have a six by six hoop, just do your, um, you can do your, uh, your five by seven. It's going to fit. In there, they're just going to be super, they're going to be almost, I don't know if they touch or if they're going to be almost together. But you can do your 5 by 7 so don't stress out if you don't have a 6x6 uh, six six inch hoop. I sent a note to my rep today. I said, hey, I'm trying to be really patient. Can you give me an update on the hoops? And I can't remember what he said to me. He... What did he say? I'll have to read, you to read it to you tomorrow. But he was basically like, no, I can't get you, give you an update, and I'm starting to get really impatient, too. Just know they're coming at some point. So just be patient. It'll be here. So here's the 6 by 6 I try not to bu bug. You know, I know you guys are like that, too. You try not to bother us because we're going to get it to you as soon as we can. But I try not to bother my... Um, my distributors because you know they want to get us our stuff okay here we go i'm gonna slide this in it's just nice having a little extra room right that's why i'm using the six by six it gives me a little extra room but you can fit this in your five by seven you can do this in your six by ten and you could do um i think uh if you're doing the two inches um, the two inch blocks, you can fit this in your um, six by 10. You can do six at a time, but there were, are there 12 of them? That, that could be perfect. I also did it in the eight by 12, but it was just too much wasted space. I am looking for my, my little uh, clear pouch that has one, 12, four, and 13. Let me grab that one. Alrighty, here we go. Here's my spray tent. Here are my fabrics right here. And the reason I grouped these this way is because I was doing bubble gum, the lighter pink with these two, and taffy with these two. So I thought we could go in and put it in like we did the last one. 
Um, let me look at your comments really quickly, make sure I'm not missing something. Uh, what other color were you thinking? Oh my goodness, Shelly, I'm not even sure what we're talking about. Oh, are we talking about for the, but instead of the buttermilk? I don't, I mean, that, that stitching with the fabric, I think just looks, I think the quilting kind of gets lost. So I was thinking taffy or maybe the green, maybe one of the lighter, one of the greens would have looked good, but I think I would have done a different color for sure. Don't you think? Like, you can see it here, but, and these, yeah, it'll look beautiful once it's all stitched out. I'm just being picky, picky, picky. Okay, here are the blocks that we're going to do. So we're going to do this last stitch out, and then we're going to call it a day. You don't have that much homework left. Okay, let's load them up. So I'm going to go home. Home clears the screen. Embroidery pocket and these are all filler blocks so we're just going to the quilting first one we're going to load is going to be um zigzag two two by two vertical two by two for so it's going to be this one set and let's pick out our hoop size i'm going to go up here and let's go six by six all right, I'm gonna just drag it up here. And we're gonna add, next one, geometric seven, two by two. Geometric seven, two by two. And I'll fix them later on with my move buttons if, if you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. But uh, we're doing geometric seven again. So that one right here, we're gonna go edit, make a copy. And we're gonna do a zigzag two horizontal this time. So now we have to add because we don't have one of those on our screen. Zigzag two, we want the horizontal one, which will be the first one. Okay, and now if you want to make them look pretty, you can. We're just going to go edit, move, touch. Oh, this one I have to move. I'm outside of my embroidery field. It would have told me to change to a bigger hoop. Oops. I'm going to scoot these up. Might as well. Looks good. All right, we're set. Now, if you want a color group, we're gonna change that. We're gonna go in here and change our colors. The first two I was doing in the light pink, and then the second two I was doing in the darker pink. That'll give us an opportunity to change our thread color. Let me make sure I didn't miss any comments if anyone needs help. Is it on your website? Is what on the website? Aw, thank you, Donna. I hope, I hope it just helps. What page is she on? Just finishing the geese. I am not on any page. I'm doing filler blocks right now and I'm stitching my filler blocks according to the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet I emailed out. Um, if you didn't get it, you can email me and I'll send it to you. It's also on our Facebook page under, under the Solon group under files. So I'm grouping this so that we can have our colors. We don't have to, so we can color group and we don't have to change as many colors. So let's go in here now. And I loaded them like this, okay? So this one right here, we're gonna come down here. This is all the placement and the tack down. It's gonna be this one. What? that's not it. That's not what I want. I want, is that it? That is it, okay. This one right here, I'm gonna do light pink. So I'm just gonna choose any light pink. And I'm gonna choose the same light pink. If you choose different light pinks, then it's not gonna color group. So I'm gonna choose that one. And then for this one, I'm gonna choose that same pink. Uh-oh, did you see it bump down here? That's not what I want. I want this one and then I wanted 
this one. Hmm. I'm not sure why it did that one. So I'm going to have to put my fabric down here um, instead of, I think it's stitching this, this, and that, and that. So just pay attention. Did I do that right? Pink. And then that one's pink. This one right here, I'm going to do darker pink. So I'm just going to choose this pink right above it. And this one here, the horizontal, well, I guess you can't touch it. Darker pink. Okay. So I'm going to load mine. Um, I'm going to do right here, 112 and 4 and 13. So I'm going to do 112, 4, 13. The fabric is what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and say embroidery. Look at all the steps here. I'm going to go here, color group. And so there's all of the steps and then my light pink and my dark pink. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me see. Do you need help? So the kit you have online, is it all of the fabric? Are we talking about the kit for which kit? Or what else do I need to purchase? Also, when will you get the next set of cutie? Oh, cuties, this evening, one of my projects is going to be to post all of the pre-order for the cuties July through December kits. All of the fabric's been ordered. I think all of it's in stock except for like there's like two or three different bolts. But if you guys aren't, like this is the perfectionist in me. I make you wait because I want exactly all this. If you're okay with substitutions, I might be able to have stuff earlier. But I will let you know. I think I'm going to be able to, I'm cutting 48 of each kit to start with. I want to say we probably went through like 100 of each kit um, of the first cuties. All right, let me look at my chart, make sure I have everything set. I have to look at the little one because this is the one that says, for, for right now, let's go ahead and I'm just going to do the, um, this is going to be the placement for... I'm going to stitch out placement for the batting and placement for the uh, background fabric. So let's do that first. While it's doing that, I'm going to give all of these a shot of spray. This is how I have it grouped. I'm going to have to hold this down. I have these two together and then I have these two together. This and this. This is the darker pink. And then here are my my um my one inchers. I mean, sorry, my two inchers. I'm just feeling them to see where the bumpy side is. I'm holding my filming arm at the same time because it wants to pop up. These I'm gonna spray heavier. And these these light. Those don't need much. Oh my goodness, Rolo. I was worried about you. I'm so happy to hear from you. I was like, what happened? Is she okay? Um, I would love to have that cute iron too. Oh, the iron is so great. Oh no, Joanne! I'm gonna read those tonight. I'm gonna read them. Okay, let's skip the next step, which is tack down. You know, let's just touch right here. It's still orange. I'm gonna go to turquoise. I'm sure there's a. There's some people who made comments about maybe spouses that aren't here anymore and that, oh, that's so heartbreaking. I think about that with me and Patrick. <laughs> Patrick always tells me I'm going to go first because I'm not healthy. Uh, he's just kidding with me. Don't get upset. He's We're just playing around. But, um, yeah, I can't imagine what it's like to like have somebody, your soulmate, and then not have them, it just makes me, I don't even wanna think about it. Yes, full bloom, full bloom 
Home kits are going to have all the fabric that you need. Um, and there's only two pieces of embellishment fabric, and that's going to be uh, silver leather as well as um, uh, grapefruit um, felt. So all of that's going to be in your kit. Remember with the design. So the design, which I have to buy for retail too, uh, you buy the design and the background quilting directly from Kimberbell. Any of that stuff that they don't let us sell to you, we have to, we buy at retail too. All right, so I'm going to put this down in all, batting down in all of the inner squares. Okay, let's pay attention to our fabric that we put down. Did I not load? I thought I loaded it, you know, one, two, three, four. Did I not? I could change the order. I have on the Luminar and the Solaris, I could have changed the stitching order. You have that feature. Okay, first one we're going to put down because we are doing... This is what, 1, 12, 4, and 13. So filler block one is that one up there. And of course, I have no idea what fabric that is. Oh, it's this one. So this first, we're going to put this up here. And I'm pretty sure it loaded so that I have... Did you know my dogs love to bark? Well, Momo loves to bark. He's up there like barking his head off right now. This one next, because I'm doing both of these in bubble gum. I could do all of these in taffy. Taffy, I think, would look great with all of these. And then... I think, but I'm not sure, this one. I think, actually, I'm going to do taffy on these, and I'm going to do bubble gum on these, because I think the light color is going to look better on this dark. This is directional. Which direction do they want it? I need my book, because I can't tell. Does it matter? All right, let's make it just like the book. Up and down. They want this one up and down. I can't help it. I'm a rule follower. Okay, I am going to go. We're skipping the next grouping of steps because this is the tack down. I'm just going to touch in here. And I'm going to go here until there's no more pink and you can see the design. I'm going to tap. You know what? I think I'm like, I worry that the taffy's going to just get washed out and it's just going to be the same as this. I'm just, I have buttermilk in there. Let's see how I like it. A lot of times when I go rogue, I'm not happy. And then for this, I might do the. Remember, I'm going to have to stop it though because unless I want to do buttermilk in here. I'm going to stop it when it cuts. I'm going to keep my finger here. I'm going to cut it, but if you just want to do your pink in both of them. Okay, I stopped it. I'm going to do taffy here because I think the pink will be pretty. i got to put my foot up so I can get my thread out. Taffy, where are you? Oh, there it is on the floor. When in doubt, in my house, if you're stitching... It's on the floor. Oh my God. I I have absolutely loved the cuties. If you did not do cuties one, you, well not cuties one, but cuties two, January through June. You should do it. It's, those are like so fun and they're adorable. This should stop after this because it's gonna let me do the color change to do the stitching for this. And I think I'm gonna just choose a color that shows up. Let me look at what's in the kit. Like, how about this? Let's do something fun. I'm doing those two. 
I'm a rebel. <laughs> I'm such not a rebel. <laughs> oh, man. Shelly, I'm so happy that you've had fun. Wasn't that? This has been fun. I always think they're fun. You know when they're not fun? There's a couple of times where I'm not on my game. I do not like... I want it to be perfect for you guys. When I am stitching, I want everything to be perfect. I want instruction to be perfect. When I make a mistake and I lead you guys astray, like, I cannot stand that. It just, like, ugh, just upsets me. I want it to be perfect. Oh, my God, Rolo. I can't. Oh, oh I'm going to stop that because I'm going to put this in. This is pistachio. I know, so we didn't even need to add those colors, but now you know how, how to do it. It would have, if we were color grouping and I was keeping the same colors, it would have, uh, it would have, you know, done what we wanted it to do, which means less thread changes, which is what we always want. I'm adding more thread changes because I am changing out my, changing up my colors. And I'm just using whatever colors are in the thread kit. make it work. I'm going to press it, flatten it out, cut to my muslin, and it'll all be fine. I should have watched that a little more carefully. All right. That is all for today. You're going to go ahead. I'm, I'm probably really going to go have lunch, check on Patrick, and then I'm going to come down and finish my stitching. I would really love to have my one and two stitched together to show you tomorrow um, on the live feed. I'm just going to read your comments really quickly. Um, I would love it, Carol, if you used our affiliate link. Yeah, we, we, you know, we have an affiliate link. We get a little bit of credit when you buy through our affiliate link. I should go through my affiliate link when I buy the background quilting too. You know what? Seriously, I don't. I'm going to go through the affiliate link and buy, buy my stuff there. I usually just go on. Um... Da, 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 da. Oh, thanks, Joy. I'm glad you enjoy. I'm glad you enjoy the mistakes and all. All right, I think I answered all the questions. Ellie, I'm. You're on my mind, so I'm going to give you a call right now. Hope you had fun. The video for this should just post, so it just should be on our A1, and we'll also cut the link and we'll put it on our Facebook page. That was great. It was so much fun. Hope you got through as much as I got through. I will um, post the remainder of the homework because aren't those filler, the filler blocks are so easy and fun, I think. So I will post the remainder of that. This is your homework in case you are just joining us. You need to complete whatever was not completed during the sew along. That's your homework. So what we didn't complete is we didn't do scissors two, three, and four. And we didn't do this filler blocks 15, 16, and 17. Those are going to be the ones that look like this. We just did 1, 12, 4, and 13. You're going to have to do 2, 8, 5, and 7. When you're done with that, you are going to press everything, trim everything, and you're going to sew it all together. So for next week, what should get, be complete is... This section right here, that's section one. This section here, that's section two. And it should all be sewn together. Although, don't be stressed out. If you have other things to do and you're busy, it's okay. This is just, you know, for, for you to stay on track and be stitching with us. I want this all done. And then next week, we are going to do the spools, the iron this. We're going to do section three, section four, and then we'll sew it all together. So thank you so much for joining me. That was super fun. Um, how do you go through the link? Oh, Nancy, just go to A1 Vacuum and Sewing, and one of the tabs on the top will say Affiliate Link, and then you just click the one that says Kimberbell. We also add the affiliate link for the next me, um, 
the me box is it a box that you get that's going to be on the very top but just scroll down to just the regular kimberbell link just click on it and then just do your shopping like you would normally do all right i will see you later um we'll see you next we'll see you on the live feed and we'll also see you next monday to finish up the embroidery for this